Oakley. Oakley, Oakley. Just a few swigs of coffee. And I think we'd be good to go. What are we doing now? Uh oh, let's turn in all these missions first. How you doing, homeboy? And <laughs> yes, you are first. I'm doing all right. Were you on Beans and Sassy stream stream last night? I can't remember much. Like, but I don't want to have to. Re I don't want to repeat the story if you ex if you actually experienced it. When they were doing Need for Speed Heat. So you didn't see what went on with that dude coming in and ramming like all the racers? That you missed out, man. <laughs> you missed out. Um That's probably like the like if you wanna like if you ever wanted to see me like when I get angry <laughs> that, that that that's probably as much as you're gonna get from me. Um we were racing and um, I get I, after looking at the video, apparently he was a guy who plays on PC and was having trouble joining the party. So Ann was helping him. Dude gets in the party. We do a couple races. That's fine. Nothing big, right? On the second, or no, no, it was either the second or the third race with him. This dude rams everybody, and I'm talking like on straightaways. And me, you, you know me. I'm the dude who ro who rolls up in the um, you know the G wagon, or I whip out the Barracuda, just because you know I, I play for shits and giggles. I'm not there to win. I like I like to haul ass, yeah. Like so, if like if I have the opportunity to win, I'm gonna take it. But for the most part, I know that if I, I'm not if I don't win, I'm Gucci. Like I, I don't care. I'm just here for shits and giggles. He rammed everybody. He took out um he took. Huh? Uh oh, sorry, sorry. That was my roommate. <laughs> yeah. Um, he was driving the Beetle. Um, he took out Beans first, and like Be like uh, Beans got pissed off. Was like, "Yo, what the fuck?" But then in the at the in the middle of the race, Beans flew off a cliff and just quit because like that was just kind of like the icing on the cake. Like you know, it just kind of just kind of sent him over the edge. But he didn't really do anything about it. He just kind of like got a little bit heated. And then um uh, but he ran me like after Beans. And apparently ram the other dudes on a turn or, or like on the straightaway as well, but like uh, it for me he pissed me off because like I understandable but but we weren't ramming each other, like he he just decided to ram us out of nowhere. You get what I'm saying? So he has all the momentum in that. Like we we weren't we were just doing chill racing, man. That's not what it was about. I know you can take out a big a beetle. It's basically paper on wheels. But yeah, man, like, so, uh, after, like, because I was, like, the last one to finish the race, um, just cause, like I said, I, I roll up in the slow cars and stuff like that. <laughs> Un understood. Uh, completely understood. I'm not, <laughs> um, I completely understood. But let me tell you what happened, dude. So, uh, I was the last one to finish the race, and it, I, I like, I had my phone on to watch them while I was playing. 
and so I hear them, and like even though people got rammed and stuff like that, they weren't really trying to react. I guess like I was like the icing on the cake, because the instant I can get off the race, I'm like, yo, who the fuck is in the beetle? <laughs> and Beans like clockwork just said, all right, I got you, <laughs> and just cut him from the group. He comes back. He comes in. He was in, he was watching Anne's stream, and he comes back and uh, tries to uh, uh, like just apologize for bumping, and like. I, I was like the first. I was like, I'm not like he's like he's like I'm sorry and like and like uh, like like do you like do you accept my apology or some shit? And like I'm like I, I'm not ready for him to come back. Like fuck that dude. He 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 bumped the shits and giggle racer. <laughs> like you don't do that shit. <laughs> yeah. But like no it. it I, I, if you're ever curious what like, what it's like to like actually get under my this skin, it, it takes me a bit. I really know how to control my anger, and I really didn't have a bad day. But there was just something so fucked up about like I wasn't even doing anything to him, man. It, like it's so like it sucked, but it also oh, it was also good that you know like uh, everybody had my back because T Raw came in and T Raw lit his ass up, and T Raw wasn't even in the race. T Raw wasn't in the race. But he when he heard some shit was going down and somebody was ramming. And he just came up in the chat and started lighting into the dude. <laughs> so like it was it was both humorous and like a, a fucked up moment. This is it, everybody. Like let me see if I can like find like a timestamp for you so you don't have to like watch the whole whole thing. Let me uh. Any questions? No problem. And you will, but for now I need you so, to like, the sanctuary in case this is just another trap. You'll get your payback, Mordecai. Yeah, good. I promise. Uh -huh. Hold on. Give me one second. Vault hunter. We have a shot of stealing the vault key and stopping. Just wanna make sure, yeah. So all you have to do is get past the force field that'll atomize you, destroy a bunker carrying enough firepower to level a continent. So like the race where he rammed us all was about like a, an hour and twenty into the stream. It's time to get clap trapped a thousand cuts. And then, the uh, when I come in and start, like, on the chat and start, like, like, lighting up. Or, like, started laying into him and stuff like that. It was about, like, an hour and 30 into it. Just because, like I said, like, you know, like, I'm a slower racer. But, like, honestly, it all, like, the juiciest part of it takes place, like, at an hour and 20 into it. Because you see Beans' perspective on it. You don't see what happens to me. From Anne's stream... Uh, I only watched a bit of it, but for her, it's like she stepped away to take care of her dog, so you're not gonna see anything, anyways. It's just her audio. I think the only thing that you'll get from that end, if you watch that side, is what the dude says. Um, but for her, um, let me see. Dude, hold on. Let's go to her channel. I think I think hers is like an hour in it as well. Just because they both start at the same time. I didn't stream it. I was just tagging along. I, I was done streaming for the day, and I just wanted to just hang out. I don't have a perspective on it. I'm just telling you what, what from my voice, what went down. But it's Bean's perspective for, like, everything. But, yeah, dude, like, uh. I was just happy that, you know, it was, like, to actually have a community, like, come together and, like, back me up. Like, I, at first I thought, like, my anger was unjustified because I don't usually get that way. And, like, I know I was upset for a good reason. I was trying to be nice because I was saying stuff like, you know, like, I don't care what you drive, but, like, control your shit. <laughs> like, just, like, we're not in this. Like, I'm not in this for, you know, the gold. I'm not in this to, like, you know, be the best dude. Like, what the fuck are you hitting me for? <laughs> so, like, I'm just letting you know, like, uh, that's what went down on my pers That's what went down for me. But go ahead, man. Like, just check it out. Like, it's about, like, about an hour 20 into it is when that race starts. His name is DJ.
tag every inch of this mountain if it's the last thing I do. Let's go. We're going to make Jack regret ever sending him shop on this cliff. It'll take him minutes to wash this graffiti off. Minutes, I say! <laughs> hey, you coming or not? Oh, right. You're not a Hyperion robot. I forget that sometimes. bitch. Careful, Slam. My boy's seen a ton of bad guys between you and the bunker. I know you can do it. I'm making my way up the cliffside, soldier. Keep pushing your way up and I'll meet you at the chamber. Take out those turrets on the tower so they'll 
see it. I think I even made a highlight of it. Fuck that guy. I'm a bad guy, but I'm like, some of my boys to help you I don't out. even know how, but somehow he got underneath my skin with just a simple, with the simplest fuck bump. <laughs> I know you're joking, dude. You wouldn't just outright say that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, like I was like, hell no. I'm too smart for you. What do you mean? Knowledge is learned. I don't think I'm smart. I think I just have more experience. So like just experience is what made me, you know, a little bit more wise and but nothing too serious. That force field protects the final door to my chambers. It will only deactivate once you've destroyed the bunker. Like I won't say I'm dumb. Because I know I'm not dumb. But like at the same time, like I, I don't think my intelligence is something to like write home about. In the bi land of spot in the Bible. <laughs> Hell yeah! One auto cannon down. So what'd you see? Did you go see the um the highlight, or did you just go fast forward to the actual part in the stream? Okay, yeah, I made a highlight of what what went down as well, just because like I want I want to have something saved. Apology was was complete bullshit. Cause he's like, I want to apologize for ramming people. You, it'd be one thing if you like you rammed one dude. He rammed everybody. Everybody got he got everybody in that race pissed off.
a bitch. How do I do the cheat that I did to get the badass ranks? Okay, um, let me pause it quickly because it's actually a lot more than just doing a cheat. Um, let me show you quickly. So, unfortunately, to make this process easier, you have to have, like, played a lot of the game already. That's the crazy part. Because what it, hack what it hacks is that number at the top. So, you see that 73369 at the top? That's my badass rank. And that goes up no matter what um character you play so like it's gonna be seven three three not three three six nine if i play a different character it's gonna be seven three three nine if i play like if i play this character it's shared between all your playthroughs and it keeps on going up it's infinite so um you have like but what what that correlates to so like that seven three three six nine that that equates to me having about i would say maybe 300 badass tokens unlocked like like genuine badass tokens unlocked like i played the game long enough where i got where i earned 300 badass tokens and so once you have a high enough badass rank then you can do this hack because what it does is it hacks the current amount of badass ranks that you the current amount of badass tokens that you have that you legally should have and then once once that happens all you need is one all you need is uh, your main account and then a dummy account and what you do is is you hop in on your um uh, you you uh, boot up a game you make the the dummy account join you you enter the game exit and then like you I believe uh, there's a video on it it's called the badass token hack you exit the menu log back in with the dummy account log your character in and somehow that resets your badass to your badass rank but not really and then exit out and then log back in on your main account and then it will re it'll reset all the tokens without resetting your score and then you just keep on entering the tokens it was a long process like it's not a short one because of my rank like i, I like i honestly like was uh, tapped like i wish i had more tokens to demonstrate but i was literally going like that for a solid hour once like and uh just to get to um just to get up 50 points so all this took i would say about eight hours worth of just tapping it, it did take some work to do this hat and it's a lot easier the more tokens you have so like if i did this if i like let's say if i had like a, a million badass rank then technically i would have like what maybe like 800 tokens and then this process would be a lot faster if you ever do it yourself, you'll know what I'm talking about. It it, it 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 requires steps. You have to have played the game a lot before you can do that that hack. Which is why I said I did it, because I had played the game so much, but then I basically hit a um a difficulty wall, because like like the the, the difficulty spike in this is huge. Like honestly, what I'm gonna do when I finish the play the the main story playthrough on the first playthrough, I'm gonna go test out and see how strong the um the DLC stuff is because it, the the difficulty just skyrockets like you can't do it yourself and I had the unfortunate luck of being offline so I had to do it by myself and so that's why I did the badass rank thing so that's why that's why I call it a glitch not so much a hack because a hack would require, you know, me actually like going in the code and saying like, oh no, this is how many I have. No, it actually took some actual fucking work 
to get this done, believe it or not. <laughs> You got buddy what you got can I get the 94 sham <laughs> that ain't happening and side note like I, I never I never understood this so look look that that when you defeat him he, he spews out a bunch of loot right so so work with me on this he spews out a bunch of loot but in this game only a certain amount of loot can actually fall so as you collect more and more comes out of this gun see see just like that and I've always wondered if this was a dick joke <laughs> it, it never got clarified for me but like <laughs> thank you for stopping by candy I appreciate it But yeah, like as you pick up, like and like I'm serious. Like, I, let me see if I can make it, make it do more. Is there more? Or are you done? You done dribbling? <laughs> so I, I that's all. That's all I was wondering. Like, I, they never clarified that for me. I, n I never knew. <laughs> uh, exactly, man. <laughs> but like it. I never, I, nobody ever questioned it. And the thing is, is that you think somebody would bring it up. So, little fun fact, this boss right here, he drops like a very popular shield called the Sham. I, I never really cared for it because like I said, I had the badass hack thing. So I, I can survive without all these cool nifty trick things. But this is like the most farmed boss in this game. Everybody has, any anybody who really loves this game has definitely farmed the fuck out of this boss. And nobody ever talks about that. Never, nobody ever talks about the dribblage at the end of the fight. And like, I'm, I'm like, I thought I was, I thought I was weird. I was like, maybe I should never bring it up. But this is my stream, so we're gonna have those, you know, in-depth discussions now. <laughs> I'm nearly there, soldier. I'm climbing up the rear of the control car. I'll meet you inside. Yeah, I'm in. Um, I'm in uh, Phoenix Empire. Uh, I'm in the Phoenix Empire, but that's the only that's the only um, crew I'm on. High quality, low price. No okay, one second. I just want to get the the loot. Oh, I forgot I sound like Handsome Jack. I'm like, why do I hear Handsome Jack? And it, it's this, this is, uh, he has a voice modulator on. Ooh. Is that an E Tech shotgun I see? Gimme, gimme. Uh, ooh, that reload speed. What do I want to get rid of? We'll get rid of the pistol. Nade launcher shotgun. Ah, uh, it's a fucking TDR. Why did I pick this bitch up? Ah, uh, damn it. And none of my moderators are on right now, so give me a sec, people. Do not click that link. Do not go there. <laughs> I know, I, it's 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 just annoying man like I'm, I'm mad that I have to deal with stuff like that it, it's kind of fucked up that they actually like harass um new streamers like that But you know, whatever. It is what it is. 
I see. But uh, angry, I know you've been around the block around here. You 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 know not to click on stuff like that. Like I, <laughs> I don't have to explain that to you. You've probably seen it plenty of times on Ann and Beans' to stream. <laughs> But no, it's just. I just find it. I find it a little, a little fucked up that they harass like you know streams like that. The password is. Like going into this, even though I've never streamed before, I knew something like this would exist. It's, I just didn't expect it this early on. Like I, I think my first bot appeared, like um, I would say uh, on my third day streaming. Like, like, I've never streamed before, and I get a bot on my third day streaming. Like, that's how bad it is. <laughs> and I'm like, I just find that a little fucked up. <laughs> because anybody who's like, a, you know, an impressionable young kid just trying to get out in the world and just doesn't know, it's like, ooh, I'd like to get more followers. <laughs> Is it an innocent one? Is it really an innocent one, or is it one of those ones that has hidden malware that starts uh, searching for your personal information? Because there's plenty of stuff that are Trojans. Like it's all, like the actual place it takes you is innocent, but the code behind it isn't. That's why we always gotta advise people not to click on that stuff unless you have like a VPN or something. I detect you're getting close. Hurry and reach me. You must get the True. True. But I don't know what's worse. I don't know what's worse, getting sent to an 18 plus site or having your credit information stolen and being broke the next day. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. I, I prefer a titty out of, you know, being homeless and on the street. <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> Well, you know, once you're feeling better, you're welcome back. Because <laughs> I don't think I provoked any thoughts. Pretty sure I provoked some blood flow. <laughs> the brain ain't located there, my guy. <laughs> But yeah, man. I think that's why I really like Beans and Ant. Like, I really honestly liked what happened last night. I deleted the comment because that's, like, so... I usually... My moderators uh, have made a habit of coming on my stream early on, Candy. Um, And I'll block him when my stream is done, but I deleted the comment. I will block him. But um, I have trouble because... I don't have um I don't have a laptop to really do this. The only thing I really got is my cell phone. And unfortunately I got fat thumb syndrome. So like it's not really easy for me. Like I can do it, but if it'll take a lot out of me specifically to go and do it. But um hopefully if my brother comes by on the stream earlier today, I'll tell him to go through the stream and look for your comment and who it was and have them block that person. Or block bot, but for the most part, I'm I'm just kind of like in the delete game right now, so nobody really deals anything with it. You're already married, angry. I don't know, man. That's between you and <laughs> and your partner. <laughs> So what's it like to integrate? Is it, does it give you a little shocking feeling? <laughs> Gotta share source codes later. Oh my god! Ooh, you. <laughs> I see. 
I see you've gotten to the, to the personal level. <laughs> oh, well, what would that be? Like, what would that be considered? Like third base? To what would third? Would that be considered third base for a robot? <laughs> That's my crewmate. If you guys heard that, I don't know if you did. That got loud. <laughs> Dude, like straight home run. <laughs> Come on, dude. I hate these dudes. I hate having to go in this fucking shield, do this, get zapped, and then kill them. Ugh. But a straight home run, dude. Details later, Roland. Come on. Hmm. Sorry for the slurpage. It's early morning. I haven't finished my coffee. I should start a coffee drinking ASMR stream, shouldn't I? turret rolling. You said you were dropping it. Where's it at? But I see my turret. Where the, and it's kicking ass. Where's your turret? Life sucks right now, Lil. About to see my homeboy die because of you. Yeah. Don't stop standing 
This is one of more sadder moments. And to anyone who has played Borderlands 2, uh, just a slight update on this scene specifically. They kill my homeboy, Roland. And in Borderlands 1, he was my first character. They already killed Bloodwing, which was... Uh, Mordecai was my first pro build in Borderlands 1. So, you know. Adios, hermano. Te amo mucho. Damn it. Get to a certain level where it's like all they give you is greens and whites. See? I ain't gotta look at the chest anymore. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh, a purple. I'll take that. <laughs> Shield. <laughs> Lucky it's better. Having level 26 weapons, so that can stay. That can go. That's gonna have to go. But I still need it. Damn it. Oh. Alright, we'll just, just get rid of all that. Damn it, Marcus.
place on Pandora and have that kind of info. The Hyperion Info Stockade. Get there. You know what's been back here. People of Pandora, my daughter is dead. Murdered by the Vault Hunter. So I've decided I'm rescinding the bounty on the Vault Hunter. If you should kill that child murdering son of a bitch before I do, I will find you. And you will regret denying me my vengeance. Come on, Scoots. Got any red rock in here? Ooh, thank you, Scoop, my dude. One. This dog. Uh, Vault Hunter? Little help? Look, it's a long story. No, it's a short story. I like short stories. We were supposed to divide the book four ways, but somebody up in Nickname before we split it up. Oh, those idiots still screaming at each other. Marshall Freeman here. If, if you want to do me a solid and shut those morons up so I can get back to my nap, that know that only one of them will tell you the truth. The other three are liars. If you could figure out which one of them robbed the other and popped them in the head for me, uh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Look, between you and me, oh, can't list a thief. When we were making out, he was all, yeah, baby, I'm gonna steal all that money. And I was like, no, don't do that. And he's like, oh, yeah, baby, I'm gonna. And I was like, that's so wrong. Sam stole the cash, without question, after she and O'Cantler were done celebrating our successful heist. I saw her stuff the loot down her pants. Look, given what we know about human consciousness, I can be certain of only one thing. I didn't steal the money. I know my own mind, and I know my mind didn't steal it. If I knew everyone else's minds, I might be able to help you a bit more, but sadly, I can only speak for myself, and I'm doing that now. Speaking to say that I didn't steal the money. Sounds full of crap. <laughs> And then, uh, if you just pay attention to what's going on, it's meant to be mis misleading like that, but he's the one with a dollar sign on him, so. Huh. Guess Jim did steal the cash. But we were friends. That's sad. Maybe we... Maybe we learned something. Yeah, we learned that Jim stole the cash. <laughs> Brick a brack. Separate ways a few years back, but Roland was my friend and nobody, 
Nobody hurt my friend. Sorry to bum you out like that, but somebody needed to tell him. I've transmitted a code to Roland's armory to your echo device. If anyone deserves what's in there, it ought to be the badass who's gonna avenge him. All right. Folks in Sanctuary don't know about Roland. Almost none of them will still be alive if it weren't for him, so you might want to let him know.
remember how I said that little skag mom must abandon it? Well, I think she found him again. I hear skag moms eat their young. You gotta take her out, man. Uh, good job saving your little skag buddy, man. I think logistically that makes you its new mom or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> bison, bison, head, 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 head. Alright. This sniper rifle is a lot better in Borderlands 1. Just putting it out there. I'll use it. parts. Where's a good place to get that done? Alright. Spyco. shooting at me. What the hell? Okay. God damn it. Invisible walls. I'll take that.
Master Li Chi. Here's a large pile of money. Just because I like you, I can give it to you. Hey, we got the money. Hey, say the ugly name to you. Hey, any, one, hey, any, one, one, blood. Just don't say nothing to nobody. <laughs> Should have kept Doctor Z in Borderlands 3. I don't know why he didn't make an appearance. I mean, he's on vending machines, but it's still stupid as hell. I love his DLC in the first one with Doctor uh, uh, Ned. You smell like popcorn. Now I'm pissed. Uh, capture the flags. Role playing game, chosen one, blah 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 blah. Hmm. So we'll click this one because they're going to kick us to a different area. Sorry, one second, people. Alright, back at it. <laughs> so, last night I got a little tipsy and I was thinking about all the unsatisfied customers I've had, so I mailed out some refunds. I don't know what I was thinking. You have to get those checks back from the mailbox before the auto post sends them off. You gotta hurry. They'll be sent any minute. King Mong. Nah, he's not up here. So where the Mong at? Boom, 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 boom. Hi, I don't want to kill you. Hi, I'm a ghost. Yeah, that 
right, this is what we're going to do. So it's going to be a little bit of a longer route, but I hate these time missions. Now, look at the map. So there's one in the complex, there's one by the shore, and the last three are by the lava. Okay. I'm trying to just remember how I did this normally. Gucci, let's go. Damn it! Forgot that there was a ditch here. Make up for it, make up for it, make up for it. Are you kidding? Uh, this would happen, wouldn't it? Okay. Good morning, Mama. How you doing?
actually am. Um, I am. I'm having a good morning. Have my coffee. You know, everything's good. Uh, do you have a moment for a brief question? Because I know you're probably just going to lurk as well, and it's, that's totally cool. So last night I um I joined uh, uh I think I told you that I actually got some support from some random streamers I met but I've been hanging out with them a lot and um I wanted to know if it's okay to shout them out on the Phoenix Empire like they're already affiliates and stuff like that but they're like great people but I didn't know where to do that or if it would be socially okay if I did that I'm trying not to overstep boundaries because I think like even in the general chat I said like I, I think one time I didn't even put a time but I said like I wouldn't be stream I'd be like late to streaming and then somebody said don't put that here and so I was like I, I just I, I thought I thought it was just like a simple up like update telling people that I just wouldn't be streaming today but I don't want to step back overstep boundaries is what I'm saying A part of Phoenix Empire. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure. I'm glad I asked before I overstepped that boundary. I do. I do. I just wanted to ask before I overstepped that boundary. The only reason for con the reason why I was even considering it though is because um something really messed up in my opinion happened on their stream and like it was to me and other people and they they really stuck up for us and handled it properly. So like in my in my book it was something honorable. Understood. Yeah, I'm glad I asked before. I just didn't want to overstep boundaries. Still getting used to how Phoenix Empire operates. Cause like I said, I think, I think in the general chat I just gave like an update, and like I was told that like that didn't belong in there. And I was like, I don't have a problem with it, but it's like kind of hard. Like I know it's all, it's also simple, but what I consider just like a simple update shouldn't like apparently didn't belong in that chat. Like I wasn't telling anybody to come to my stream or anything like that. I was just like giving a simple update. Like for example, what I posted in um, this morning, saying that just reminding people that I won't be on, I won't be here because of uh, I'm going to Florida this Thursday. Like I wanted to say that I, that means I won't be streaming, but at the same time, like I I was like I don't know if like that's just, that's also a taboo. To me, that's just an update. That to me, that's just letting people know. I'm not saying. Okay. Okay. They have those values. It's, it's just like I, I just, once again, just didn't want to overstep boundaries. But this is all things I'm trying to learn. I know, like, uh, like I said, like, I, I think, like, my ignorance on it is, is what's kind of, like, saving me from it. Uh, I just don't know what boundaries to overstep or not. Like, I, I understand why people are telling me, no, this doesn't belong here. And I get why they have to be abrupt. Because not only is it, does it probably, like, I've noticed it myself, it probably happens, like, what, 50 times a day? But it's also to get people to know about what you, how your community works. 
I just <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure like once again that I don't overstep boundaries. That was it. I just need some clarification on that. If you can, if you're gonna lurk, it's full. It's fully okay. You can lurk and stuff. You know how it is around here. I know. Like I said, I, like I said, it sometimes like depending on how you read it, because with text there comes no like tone. So like sometimes the way you guys put it, it comes off brash and abrupt. But I, I but like being uh, understanding where you guys are coming from is like I, I know that's not what you guys mean. You probably you just guys probably just deal with it like 50 times a day. So it's like uh, here I go again. You you probably have it on copy and paste at this point. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So like, it it uh, I get why you guys do it. I know it's not to be like up to be offensive or anything like that. I it's to manage the community and keep it yourself. orderly and in fashion. I've way. got a perfect spot all picked out for you. And you don't want to? That's fine. Call the High Fury and Suicide Prevention Hotline, and you'll get nothing. But if you want a huge reward, you jump off that cliff and become my bitch. Take your time. I said I understand it and I think it just un I think that's just more like a growing thing like I have plenty of experience of dealing with like corporations and stuff like that where it's like they have to keep on repeating protocol repeating protocol and stuff like that so like it's not abnormal to me I think the only difference is is that this isn't um a business it's just a community so it's a little it was just a little jarring at, at, at first but like I had to remind myself like I'm joining a, commu a community that has a set amount of rules and a thing that they're trying to push so it 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 takes a little bit of well not patience but understanding that you have to grow and learn how the community works and then once you set that aside it, then it all makes sense okay I know I know. Like I said, experience with dealing with corporations is kind of like what numbed me to that. It was only jarring because I didn't expect it, is what I'm saying. I just want you to remember one thing. Kill yourself. But it's no different than what you did, uh, was it? Yeah, yesterday to Manny. Um, we're letting him know how to, like, chat on these kinds of streams like that and how, um, even though it's innocent joking, it could get flagged. You, you, you. It, there, there's a fine tightrope that has to be walked with being kind, but also being abrupt. And like, you, you do need to be brash sometimes because you need to express the seriousness of the issue, or to get the point across, so it doesn't happen again. So I know it comes from a, a place of love. But all that aside, are you, um, I know you said you're okay, but, um, any headaches or anything like that today? Or are you doing alright? You being a good amount of rest? Drinking plenty of water? For the most part, people can't overstep. Because I want people to be able to, able to express themselves. I think you thought you overstepped, which is why I had to stop and pause my stream and let you know you were fine. <laughs> which in of itself is okay. I like that own self-concern.
<laughs> okay. Just watch yourself. Stay hydrated. Relax. Let's go kill a few racks real quickly. Jesus. Outrunner now. <laughs> I know. Just take care of yourself, okay? history buff but uh those um loader bots are actually clap trap units that have been modified hence the reason why they have innate um sensations of uh emotion Mama, if you're lurking, you're lurking. Um, I just remembered something, so if you hear this, um, I think Candy stopped by earlier in the stream, and I'll, uh, she didn't do anything, but she pointed out that a bot had appeared in my chat, and I saw it too, and I deleted the comment because uh, that's that was just like my quick reaction to getting it done. I don't know if there I don't know if there's a way to go back and see if we could remove him. She mentioned who it was. I don't know if you I don't know if you heard what I said. But Candy stopped by and mentioned who like a bot that had appeared in my stream. But, uh, I'm I'm limited in my access to handle it while I'm streaming. We humans love choices. So I don't know if there's a way if you can scroll back up to previous comments that were said in my stream to see who the name was. I deleted the comment to save people, but I don't think I blocked them.
Okay. Well, I have my I'm I only have my phone, but I know how to like do like a PC esque um type of stream or type of uh, manager. It's just harder because it's still on my phone, so it's all touch screen based. Uh, I don't know. It's just that, like I said, so I saw it, and like I said, I'm limited in what I can do, so I just kind of like insta deleted the comment just to stop people from like potentially clicking on it. That was my main concern, and I was going to go back later and actually like do like, you know, my part to find out what was going on and like, you know, uh, block them. But then Candy came in and said, like, hey, you know, block. So it's like 3JM Snisker 621. And the fact that she said that, she actually said that post me deleting the comment. So I don't know if that was, I don't know if he's a famous one or not. But like I said, now it alarmed me because I was like, she said that post me deleting the comment. So I was like, all right, now it seems like it's more of a bigger thing. But like, I'm limited in what I can do. Thank you. So I told my I told my chat like I deleted it so like nobody will click on it, but hopefully like one of my moderators will just do like a quick stop by and I can ask them. And it happened to be you. So thank you. I know everybody was talking about all these famous bots and I was like I, I don't know I don't know much about it for the most part I know what a bot is but like I don't know when or where they're gonna come or what, how to really deal with them not because it's really hard in any sense but it's just once again like it seems like they only appear when I'm streaming and then on top of it I'm like limited Much appreciated. Jesus, man. This is what happens when you play too much Borderlands 3 and you go back to Borderlands 2. <laughs> You're always ready to mount and <laughs> mount stuff and like get over objects, but you can't because that doesn't exist in this game. And there's a way to ban people before they even get to you, right? Like, you just, like, look at the list. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I got some homework to do. Uh, I'll, I'll read the list and then just go on a, on a block, um, on a block escapade. Well, block escapade, there we go. That's what I was trying to say. My tongue's a little twisted this morning. <laughs> But what's this I heard about hate raids or something like that? What, like, what, what the hell is that? Do people literally just like invade people's places and then just like just post hate comments or something?
how what goes on is it literally just a raid that comes to your channel and then like what happens just a bunch of hate comments like what like like on the off chance it does happen to me what should I expect and then how should I handle it should I just like pause my stream and then really just go into managing it and just block everybody that comes Are they in are they indiscriminate on whether you're affiliate or not? Thank you for helping me. Once I've murdered you, I will truly be a human being. If I were alive. Ow! That hurt! Like like do they just raid anybody? So like I must mean I'm human. I'm human, I'm human. Okay. Yay! This is the best day of my life. Okay. But are they indiscriminate of whoever they raid? Like they could, like they could raid me. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll just be on the, I'll be on the lookout then. I don't know if it was just some like uh, like affiliate hate or something like that. You know, like, cause to me, participating in something like that just sounds childish as fuck. <laughs> like I, I like, there are plenty of ways and like different ways you can actually go out and hate somebody. But to go out of your way just to like, just show up in somebody's stream who has absolutely no beef with you at all and just spread hate for no goddamn reason, that just sounds so childish. Intruders detected. Locking path to info stop me. Damn it! Jack doesn't want us getting close. Well, Rick, you got a plan? Well, I guess it pays to be black, Wait, right? <laughs> so now then I'll really be on the lookout. But, nah. Hopefully, hopefully I don't come across anything like that. And, but I do like to be aware of the situation, so like when it, if, if it were ever to happen, I'd be able to handle it. But they'll need some better Yeah, it sounds it sounds very childish. Like, honestly, like get a life. <laughs> Like this is how you spend your free time. <laughs> it's probably hard because they um they probably run their own person like they probably run their own VPNs and stuff like that. They probably like go through different avenues so it doesn't get traced back to them. It, it so I think I think what I do to get through the day is just acknowledge that evil does exist it just exists so like it, it that I don't know but for me personally that gives me somewhat of a better peace just to kind of come to acceptance to that the bot come in and hack his shit oh damn it that sucks <laughs> running a VPN okay and just like I, evil exists so I try to just it, it helps me a bit just to kind of accept the fact that that reality is there but to me it, it's kind of stupid that it, it exists in this territory example like I'm not saying it's right, but let's say you com you did a hate raid on somebody who you actually had beef with, like they probably did something to you. Like, I can understand the intent. Doesn't mean what you did is right, but I can understand the intent. But the fact that somebody, the fact that somebody does it just because they want to and they can, and like you're doing it to somebody who you don't know at all and has nothing against you, that to me is just the, the fucked up part about it. I'm 
sorry to hear that that somebody got hacked on um, the Empire. How we do this? Let me get the map first. Hey everybody. Uh, oh, never mind. But I can make that. So but thank you. Thank you, Mama, for coming in and blocking the guy. Thank you for informing me about all this stuff with the Empire. Um I am like Well, it is a type of harassment, and from what it sounds like, it's also Never kind of like a a, a, uh, a racial attack, or um, it could be racist, racial Give or sexist <laughs> in some of their attacks. Never. So like, Whoa. that becomes sounds a little bit more of a, a taboo, which should home. merit jail time. just trying to figure out what's the what what's going on because it's new for me like I, my ignorance sometimes can make me you know <laughs> uh, like the ignorance like the ignorance is bliss but it become it can become detrimental at the same time if you're not aware of these things which is why I try to ask the questions I didn't want to be caught lacking <laughs> Oh, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm afraid to ask questions. I just, I just find it weird. Like, um, like this is just a weird situation of its own. Like, I, I don't, under, like, I really don't understand why somebody would go out of their way to do that. <laughs> I, I just don't get why somebody would go out of their way to do that, is what I'm saying. Like, hold on. Thank you everyone for stopping by. Jesus. Turn. I just, it bothers me that somebody would do this you as well. Reset the generator. Like, even that doesn't bother me. That's not what bothers me. What bothers me is that they would just attempt that we would do it. Like, let me, let me put this. Let me put this. Eventually, the actions you choose will have consequences. Like, eventually, it, it, it will catch up to you. I don't think one person really gets away with it. And, like, you could say somebody could get away with it and they go to their deathbed. Um,. Uh, uh, and like it never got caught. But what I'm saying is that when you live a miserable life like that, and then you choose to like marinate in it, like you're already living your own hell. You get what I'm saying? I don't want. I don't want. I would want to live that life. So like, that's not what bothers me about it. It's just like, all right, man, like you're living in your own hell and stuff like that. But like I said, a lot of these people that are getting these hate streams, like it seems like they have no. They have no relation to the attackers. Like, that's the sad part, in my opinion. It's like, alright, I get you going through stuff. And, like, you want, you, you feel aggravated and you want to take it out. But, like, there's not, you're not even doing it to people who have anything to do with you. They didn't do anything to you. Like, 
You get what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's weird, and I'm not saying it's it's good in any way, but I'd have more respect if there was some kind of actual intent behind it. Not saying that it's good. <laughs> Just like, give me a reason. <laughs> That's the root of it. I'm just appalled. Like I said, I, I'm just appalled at, you know, specifically this unique one. Long time ago, there were these guys. The Crimson Lance. Worked for the Atlas Corporation. They tried to kill us. It was pretty funny. <laughs> that treasure you're searching for belonged to the last of them. Do me a favor, Mama. Um, we've been chatting it up, and I love it. But I don't know if you're lurking, lurking, or if you're uh, just kind of like hearing me in the background or something like that, and just hopping in and chiming in. But I honestly do care about your health first. If this is one of those days where you just need to rest up a little bit more, I appreciate you standing by. But please take care of yourself first. Like I'm just a dude. I ain't going anywhere. Okay, if you say you're good, then I'm gonna go with that. Okay. Just make sure you do it. That's the only thing I'm asking. I don't wanna hear stuff like, you know, hey, I'm going to bed, everybody, but you're waking up at 3 a.m. <laughs> That is the lie, and you know it. You know, you, you typing those words must have hurt you more than you thought it would probably hurt me. Because you know that was a bull-faced lie. <laughs> and if you want to, fine, yeah. I'm shooing you away now, so I can see have more of your company later. <laughs> Typing those words gave you a little itch down your back, didn't it? <laughs> I know, I know, I know it was a joke. I'm just still pointing it out. <laughs> I saw the Lamau. <laughs> no, I'm, a, I'm definitely a goober. I, I, I'm, that's that's been established by now, hasn't it? <laughs> Chillest, coolest goober you're gonna meet. Better recognize. Mm. Oh, man. I'm contemplating whether I should go out to work today or focus on packing because I don't know if I'll have time for it tomorrow. I kind of think I'm going to focus on packing. Like, I'm going to still do my basic stream. And then probably do an afternoon one. But uh, in, in the in-between times, I may be packing up.
You ever been to Florida, Mama? My stats? I think i am reached 2.0 for my average and I think I've been getting at least like one new follower every day. That's the only thing that, like, uh, in terms of uh, how, uh, average hours streamed and stuff like that, um, uh, all, all the other ones are, are complete. They've been complete. And, like, blown out the water with how much I've streamed. I think Fluffa in the chat, or uh, on the general chat, said that, uh, Miami is like crazy or something like that. I don't know for sure, but my sister's moving to Miami. And like I'm not worried about her. She's she's a tough girl. She's a big girl and she's also not moving alone. She's moving with her husband and her two kids. And um Oh my goodness. Beauty pageants. Did you enjoy it? I know there's all those stories of, you know, like, kids doing it for the mother and stuff like that. But was it something that you enjoyed, personally? actually intrigued about um, people's personal lives um, like I, for example in high school um, I used to be the guy that never really got picked for like group projects just because I was I'm gonna be honest I was in honors level classes but for the most part like um, I don't know I guess like there was already groups so a lot of these this, uh, sunburn pageants had some trophies a long time ago. Okay. But no, like, uh, there was one time I got grouped up with the cheerleader squad. And it's just because, like, I was absent the day prior, so I just got, like, tagged along with them. And I got an opportunity to really ask them, like, why do they do cheerleading? Just because, for me personally, I always thought... I'm not saying it was, like, dumb, but it never... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I guess, like, dancing for a crowd was never something that really appealed to me. I was really curious. I'm always highly curious on why people do the things they do or what those experiences are like. y'all okay like you don't have to say anything if it's too bad you know how I am but uh obviously you made it good to hear. Did, did I tell you about my accident? I don't remember who I told this story about, but I actually survived an accident as well that I shouldn't have lived from. The EMTs were really surprised that I was even alive. 
and on top of it alive with no con no head contusions or anything like that. Michael's craft store. Uh, hold on. Uh, I worked at, used to work at Michael's craft store. And, uh, one day after my shift, um, I head to, uh, a Jersey Mike's to get some food, just because it was a, it was a hard shift and I was really hungry. And, um, uh, at the time I used to ride a bike. And I'm going downhill in the bike lane. It's a green light I have right away. But somebody in the opposing traffic is making a left turn. And they decide to use me as the curb. If you know what I mean. Uh, she ran over my front uh, tire and could basically erase that tire. I slammed into the side of her car. Um, uh, because of how fast I was going, I actually like hung on to her car a bit, and then she dragged me across the road. Um, when I finally hit the ground, she ran over my left hand, and um, then because of all the momentum, I kind of in went into a like a combat role, and uh, like tumbled out of it. She drove off, and like after I got out of that combat role, like it, the momentum was so much, I actually rolled back onto my feet. And like tossed up my hands trying to hail her like why is she driving off you know at that point it's a hit and run um and like i mean i, I don't I, i'm a weird dude my first thought wasn't even being mad at her i don't recall ever being mad at her i was just more confused that she just continued to draw, drive off and um uh like so i, I have a, a a wallet chain. I don't know if you know what those are, but like my, I have a chain connected to my wallet because I actually got my wallet stolen before, and um, I had the same kind of thing for like my keys. Like my keys will retract to my hip if ever I need to, but the way I got hit, like I ba I call it like I got Sonic the Hedgehog because my shit went everywhere. I'm talking like my keys fell off the rings, like they were everywhere. My wallet burst open, like uh, my phone surprisingly it was okay enough to make a call for 911 because what ended up happening was is there was three cars that saw what went down and two of them drove off after the lady to kind of like hail her down and the third was a girl who came out you hear funny thing about her is I'm the one who just got hit you know my adrenaline's going and everything and uh, she starts crying she's like oh my god are you okay what's going on and uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm just confused as to why this lady drove off. I said, you know, like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And then, like, she reminded me, like, did you call 911 or something like that? Like, do you need me to? And that's when I went to go grab my phone and realized that it, it, it was damaged, but it was enough that, like, it still worked and I could call 911. And, um, by the time the cops came and, uh, were trying to handle it, uh, uh, one of the guys who drove off at the lady came back. Turns out that she drove she drove to the Walmart, and one guy, the guy who stayed, blocked her in, so she couldn't get away. But apparently, she she was so oblivious to what went on, she she went shopping. She she got she got a caught a car and went shopping. So the cop so when the guy came back, and told her about um. Uh the uh, where she was at. Um, the cops actually had to wait outside the Walmart for a little bit because they don't know what she looks like <laughs> uh, to, and to come and get her but while they were waiting they confirmed that she hit me because you know like I, I definitely traded paint with her <laughs> like my the scratches of my green bike were all over that car no denying that I was definitely hit and if you look at my bike there ain't no way in hell <laughs> like I, I like that that uh, she like she 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 missed me. You get what I'm saying? Like I said, she ate my front tire. My tire was bent to the point where the spokes were um became loose. Do you get what I'm saying? Like the my tire was so bent that anything that was supposed to keep it structurally sound was gone. My frame too. And um 
the EMTs they're like, hey, do you do you need an ambulance ride? Because unfortunately, in this day and age, ambulance rides rides cost money like like a motherfucker, and so like they have to ask the patient, do you need an ambulance ride? <laughs> and um, me because I don't know if you know this, I don't play about my health. I don't. I always told myself I would never lie about my health, and I take it very seriously because on the off chance that off chance being this situation, I need people to believe what's going on with me. I don't need people joking around or calling me a liar or something like that. I need people in my corner ready to help me if I need the help. And um, uh, I get, I say yeah, you know, I, I'll I'll take the ambulance ride. And they're checking me over like they do, they did the whole thing where they check your eyes because you know like a good sign that you've had a concussion or something like that is is your pupils, right? And your response to light. And I, I told I told them in detail what happened. I said, this is what happened. I said, I know I didn't hit my head because, one, I never blacked out amidst the whole crash. And I know exactly what happened. And I remember tucking and rolling and basically covering over my head. Oh, to top it off, I didn't have a helmet. <laughs> so that's a little bit on my part. <laughs> but I didn't have a helmet because I, I I'm a safe biker. Like I said, I, I, the unfortunate thing is that I had, at this one point in time, um, uh, this lady decided to make a left turn into me when she shouldn't have like I was at that actually even me going through that crosswalk would have been uh yeah yeah they had to they had to do all that stuff just to make sure I'm good and uh yeah yeah so like that that's why they were really checking me because like like uh if they, the the assessment that they did of did of me like I I should have I should have been done for um uh and it became more known uh, as I went to the actual hospital, uh, so it, here's why I don't joke about my health. I call my mom. I call my mom. Tell her, said, "Yo, I'm at the hospital. Um, I just got hit, involved in a hit and run. Um, they want you to come by, you know, to be able to, you know, drive me home and stuff like that. This is, this is, this is it. This is serious. This is the call." And even my mom was like, "You're lying." But I, I don't think it was more like she just, she was like in shock herself, like she didn't believe it, just because. Like I said, I'm such a safe dude. I'm so cautious about stuff like that, regardless. That um, I think she thought I, I, think it, I honestly thought she thought I was joking. And I said, no, mom, I'm serious. And I said, if you don't believe me, I have the officer right here. They can give you their badge number and information. And she said, you know what? Put them on the phone. Like that's how much she was like in shock that I finally actually got hurt by something serious. And um, uh, shock's real. Shock's real. I wasn't mad at my mom, but this is why, like I said, I don't joke about my health. Like, if it's an emergency, I can't have you in that shock mode. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So I don't joke about health issues. Um, uh, and so the officers, yes, this is officer. I don't remember the officer's name, but this is officer, blah, blah, blah. This is my badge number. We are at, you know, Holy Cross Hospital right now. Your son has been involved in a hit and run. And we do require your presence here to make sure he's okay and he has somewhere to go. Um, and she says, I'm on my way. She, she, <laughs> she comes. And uh, being the mother that she is, and overly worried and everything like that, she's coming in, you know, tears and everything like that, like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, like, I can't believe this, and she's like, what happened? I tell her the story, but they do the assessment of what actually happened to me, and like, um, I had no fractures, I literally got out of that crash with just road rash and bruises, amazing, um, there was, uh, like, a majority of the skin on my arm was gone, and like, for like I'd say you can kind of still see it if I ever show it or something like that about where it was because it's like darker but um but not too dark but it's just not finally healed um uh I always say that bruises are the worst bruises um when they turn yellow like they're not black and blue anymore they're yellow <laughs> and I'm a dark skinned boy so like yellow shouldn't really show on me but like on my inner thigh it was just this big purple and yellow bruise all the way down to like about my like my high shin um and like i i guess my adrenaline was so high because like i said i was already bike riding so i really didn't feel it until i finally got home and was um like on like off the medications like that like at first i was like nah, i don't think i really need medication i, I said like surprisingly i think i'm okay and i've been i've, I've been hurt before i wasn't a sheltered boy i've been uh, uh, I've been, I've never really had to go to the hospital, but for most part, any of my major injuries, including bruises like that, um, I usually just sleep off and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it hurts, but like, I've never really needed medication. But once I got home, and it like the adrenaline really started petering off, 
I, I was like, uh, <laughs> like, 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 there was like joint lock up. I was like, oh god. Like, I think my first day, I literally just stayed in bed. <laughs> but yeah, that that that's tis my story involving a hit and run. Um, oh, to top it off, uh, when the officers came, so the um, I got driven to the hospital, but like all my stuff was left at the scene so they could document it properly. So like my wallet, my keys, and everything like that was left there so they could properly document what went down. And um, those the officers came back to the hospital to like to drop off all that stuff. And um, they brought my bike too, um, which we we taught like we tossed in the back of um, my car, uh, uh, not my car, my mom's car at the time, and uh, uh, it it was just a nice interaction. But like once again, it, like, it was just it was cops, it was EMTs. Like dude, like how like how the hell are you alive? And I said like I don't know, but you know here I am. And I said, but the late they told me that the, um, they didn't give me the lady's name or anything like that. Because, uh, mine, like, I think we had to trade information for insurance, because I was on my parents' insurance at the time. And, um, like, you know how all that legality stuff goes down. But, uh, uh, they told me that she thought that I was trying to claim, claim insurance fraud. And, like, literally, I, I, got, I got taken back for a moment. I was like, you know, I, I literally just got off of work. I was heading home from Jersey Mike's. I was having a I was having a decent day, man. I just had a sandwich and I'm ready to go home. <laughs> I said the last thing on my mind is committing insurance fraud. <laughs> like, and I said I don't know, maybe next time open your eyes and don't use me as a freaking curb. <laughs> but I never got to meet the lady. I will say like I never really got mad at her. I was just really upset that she drove off cuz that made the situation worse. But um no, for the most part, everything outside of that ended up being fine um it was an experience you know i tell you know for the sake of the ladies i tell them i got hit by a truck you know just to make it a little bit more dramatic <laughs> it, was, it was a sedan <laughs> i'm trying to remember how to shoot that power box that's back there but it was an experience but that's why like you can I, I, I'm a huge advocate for health issues. I, I take them very seriously. Just throw a nade there. Did that work? God damn it. Are they? Grenade out! Son of a bitch. How are they hitting that fence? One tidbit I forgot to add about the whole adrenaline thing. I, I forgot this part. Because I, I, I looked bad at it, back at it and I was like, I kind of probably looked like a badass when I did it. But I wasn't really thinking. I was just kind of like confused. When I, After I threw up my hands to try and hail her. Um, <laughs> see, look, I think he was shot. We're near a grenade blast. <laughs> It's it's a it's just a, um you know, I, I guess it's a coping mechanism, just to let people know that you know you're all right, and that you know don't think less of them because you have scars like that. I my scars are pretty much gone. Like I said, it was, it was mostly, uh, 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 it wasn't it wasn't deep deep flesh surprisingly, but it was a lot of road rash and bruises, so I'm thankful for that. I'm still pretty, but I understand the whole the joke about scars and stuff like that just because. It, for me, it was like a little bit of a coping mechanism because it was noticeable. I had these big, big, outrageous patches on me and stuff like that. Lung surgery and it went a feeding tube. First born and then another surgery when he was five. Yeah. See, that's understandable. But I understand the coping mechanisms and like the, the things that you do to society. So like the stair, it's still on, damn it. The, the, so like the stairs and stuff like that. Don't, don't. don't don't become numerous not because like you, they would make you feel weaker and fear it just becomes a way to just to help other people to understand like I'm good where the hell I'm trying to remember how I got that damn box but uh when the adrenaline was kicking in on that uh after that lady drove away I had forgotten this part uh traffic didn't stop uh <laughs> 
I forgot that traffic was still going on, so here I am in the middle of a, a busy road, you know, with my stuff splattered all over the place and my bike in the way, and somebody didn't pay attention, and I almost got hit again, actually. Uh, somebody was making a left, uh, making a left turn per post all that commotion, and I stuck up my hand and gave him like I, I told him hold up, and uh, I like it was it was kind of a badass moment. I'm not gonna lie, I lifted up my bike with one arm post this whole injury like I'm bleeding and stuff like that like I'm lift up my bike with one arm and toss the bitch into the grass to the side and then hail him like now you can drive <laughs> I don't usually have like badass moments like that but I was more just like hey yo hold up <laughs> uh, I think what I remember more is just the crying girl Cause I mean that was hilarious. Like, like I said, like I'm I'm the one there bleeding. Like just got hit, and she's the one going, "Oh my god, oh my god!" And to the point where I almost like, "Are like, are you all right?" <laughs> oh, it definitely does. I just didn't expect it. But I'm not. I'm like I said. I'm like I'm, I'm not a stranger to to injuries like that. I know she cared. I know she cared. Like I I know it was. I know it was. Uh, it was a. Uh, um, it was. It was all out of emotion and a gen like yeah, genuine care. I understand it completely. That that's not. That's not. It, it was just. It, it was just hilarious at the same time. Because <laughs> like. I I, got, I wish I could have like a video recording of it because I don't like I said I wasn't I wasn't mad in any sense of the word at anything that went on I was more baffled that it happened and on top of it what was going on like like I said like here I, here I am the one who got hit and like I I I, I enjoyed all all the attention I got um, one thing I have to say is I appreciated everything everybody that went there to actually help because nobody needed to help all those people could have just drove off. And so, like, it, I do appreciate what went down and how it went down. It's just, it was just crazy. Uh, yeah, you know, you don't know. Maybe she has like a phobia with blood or something like that. But she's like, is a very affectionate, caring person, and realized that you probably really needed help. But like at the same time, she's like facing her current fear of being around blood. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So you never know. go this way but it was an interesting one I'm not shy to injuries I, I, it's just that was just a different kind of one ah damn it hold on one second I might go mute for a second I thought I charged my um my controller but I just got pinged that it's uh not charged should be kicking in back now. I know when her mom passed away, I'm thankful for her joining because when I called my father the same night and told him no, he went into shop. Got through that and I'm going to deliver. Yeah. I feel that. <clears throat> I understand that completely. I um I remember when my grandpa passed. So uh uh my grandpa wasn't my biological grandfather. Um uh he uh it's an it's it's, it's an interesting twist. But yeah, the, it's just it's all kinds of different things but um when my grandfather passed like uh he, he was very special to me and uh, he passed when I was six and I don't know he, he was such an amazing man but like I don't know how he influenced me in six in the first six years of my life so much but when he passed I remember um it took me a while to really accept his death I didn't believe he was dead for uh, two whole years um 
and there was just one day in the back of my mom's car I started crying just out of nowhere and she freaked out because she couldn't figure out what was wrong and I was bawling and I finally got the words to come out to say like I'm just Miss Grandpa and then she understood Welcome, but um welcome, it in some cases I wish me uh, I know I was a kid and I shouldn't be ashamed of what went down <laughs> he was amazing absolutely amazing in fact um, his birthday was July 5th and we just celebrated his 100th birthday if he, you know he was still alive over a zoom call with a lot of his close family members and I gave a little bit of a testimony to everybody because I had to tell them I said you know I, I didn't say anything in the eulogy I didn't say anything in the eulogy I didn't I was a kid when he passed I, w I was too young to really understand what went on or even really accept it like I think I think I knew about death but like like it was like kind of like that that shock of like not him you get what I'm saying like too soon like I know he was old I know like it was it was coming but at the same time like not now like I did not need this so, like I denied it for two years and so uh, it I had like a little testimony thing that I did to um really pay homage to him and stuff like that and I have the uh, we had the zoom call recorded um, and I, I'm glad they did because I downloaded it and I have it kept safe because I felt like even though I didn't get a chance to really say anything to my grandfather, um, that situation right there on the Zoom call I needed. Nephews lost their minds. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy how the people who are really important to us end up like that. fishing and spending time so I'm a bit of a sweet tooth um, but what I used to do with my grandfather is uh, we used to go to Dunkin Donuts on Wednesdays he, he, he was a sweet tooth and so he kind of rubbed that off on me and it's helped me move on and cope honestly like I, I, I don't regret that situation at all I, I, I tell my sister all the time that I was very appreciative being able to join that because uh, I I literally it's crazy. A lot of people say that um, they have, that they have their own methods and ways of healing, and um, they do things like that to heal. But like that actually did help me heal. The fact that the fact that I'm that I'm here streaming and doing stuff like this is because that healed me. Because it was a major roadblock in my growth. But yes, he liked Dunkin' Donuts because he's he's a sweet tooth and. Back when I was a kid, donuts and stuff like that weren't as expensive as they are now. So we we could get like a 12 pack easily for like what, like two bucks or something like that. And he used to take me out every Wednesday, and we'd stop by Nugget Donuts, and like he got me, he got me, he got me hooked onto Boston creams. <laughs> Boston cream is my favorite. But now that I'm an adult and I gotta watch myself, you know, I'm trying to wean myself away from the sweet tooth. But every time I have a Boston cream, I always think of him. This thing, hurry up. Threw a grenade up there. Oh. Damn it, it's not the teleporting one anymore. <laughs> I know my grandpa had good taste. You got the flag raised? Now bust the generator! <laughs> That showed no salt heat who's boss. Come on back, Slab. Oh, Jesus. Grandpa's got great taste. But I like this. Every stream, people get to learn a little bit more about me and who I and who how I became the guy I am today. And once again, this just all falls underneath the category of um, why I do what I do now, why I call this my oasis and stuff like that. Because I, I could, I could, let me put it this way: I've reached a phase where I've been through a lot of trauma and a lot of messed up things in my life, but I'm learning more and more each day how to accept them for what they are. And so, I understand that we're all on different levels, and we all have our different struggles, and I basically want the mo the best for people 
to get to the point where I'm at where even though we face traumas or have them or and then maybe potentially ha I, I don't know if I'm done but maybe in the future I may have more things I might have to deal with but hopefully we get to a point where we can just grow from them and learn to accept them and move on lost your grandma dad's mom She gave me so many good memories, and it's yeah. Uh, that's the that's the crazy thing about my grandfather, though. Like like I said, he influenced me a lot in my first six years. If you really think about the first six years of your life, that's not a lot of time. I spend like at least three of those, um, uh, with things I probably would forget. Play with them, play there almost every day. Play cards, have snacks, and listen to old country. Like, yep. But those are the best times, <laughs> like those pure innocent times where everything is just good, where time slows, and you know they're so important when you have them vividly remembered. I remember there was a time fame so like I know like there's this whole like thing where like people say like chivalry is dead and stuff like that but my grandfather at a very young age well so for a little history he was a military guy he fought in Vietnam and he was a fighter pilot so he grew up where like you know and it was old school military so you know you like hold the door open for the lady you know you say yes sir yes ma'am no matter what I don't care if they're older or younger than you you give people you know a proper authority where it's due so he that, that's the kind of man who influenced me and he got that engraved to me at uh, at young as six and also he was so good at teaching you he didn't do it in a rude way like i didn't get disciplined by him at all i don't remember a single time that he actually like disciplined me for something he was able to instill all these morals and values in me without having to like be mean to me that's the kind of guy that my grandpa was and so um there was like a phase in time where it's like, uh, I remember when women were really starting to branch out and be like, I'm an independent woman, like I don't need a man, it's like that. And here I am, a growing teenager, who's just like holding the door open for them and stuff like that. And like they would like point out, like, uh, like don't do that for me, I can do it myself. <laughs> by he was a, he was a good communicator by words and action, but he also led him. There is not he, there was not one thing he was a hypocrite about. He wouldn't teach you something that he didn't do himself. So he showed me how to do all those things. It wasn't like he just told it, it wasn't a do as I say, not as I do kind of type of guy. But I remember like the like ladies would get upset with me. Cause like I'd hold the door open or something like that. And like I would just let it slide. Just because they didn't know they didn't know my grandpa. Like if they knew who my grandpa was, they wouldn't question why I did what I did. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, that's why. Like, it, it's engraved in me. I, example, so, um, at the golf course I worked at, um, though I, though I didn't have, yeah, he lived by example. The, the boss I had, he, I, I liked my boss. And the reason why I respected my boss is because every day would be a new task and he was able to manage and tell us what to do. No, like every single day, like it was, like it was nothing. So I had to respect my boss, but his personality wasn't something to really write home about. He wasn't the friendliest guy. And but he wanted to be. You could tell like there was an innate part of him that wanted to be liked just a tad bit, just because he knew he could be very brash. And so he used to hate it when I'd call him sir, when I'd say yes sir to like actions that he would ask me or stuff like that. Like he really wanted me to just call him. His name was Dave. So he really wanted me just to call him Dave. And I told him, I said, I'll call you Dave if let's say we're in a crowd and like I'm really trying to talk to you. Like I'm gonna call you by your name because I'm trying to talk to you. But I told him, I said, I'm sorry, but like if you knew who my grandpa was, like I, 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 it's, I can't. It's like, it's like engraved in me. I call people, sir and ma'am. And like, like that's, just, that's just who I am. I can't, I, I, it's gotten to the point where I, I can't control it. <laughs> And this is because that's what my grandpa did. Like, you you give people the proper authority that they're due. 
He said he doesn't care if they're older or younger than you. You you have somebody who has more experience with than you, or even if they're even if it's not even like a rank thing. If I'm going to like a store, and like they, I'm asking a person something, and they just know more about that topic, automatically, that like that's it. You get what I'm saying? Like that that like you 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 give that person the respect that's due. You call him sir. You say how you doing, sir? He's the one that told me about like before people really talked about firm handshakes and stuff like that. He's the one that told me about firm handshakes. <laughs> but it's just that military lifestyle and like he was just like perfect dude out there. But yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I'm not I'm not saying I was so brainwashed that um so example times that times that my um boss had pissed me off uh, uh i uh, uh he'd end up getting called being called dave when he shouldn't be called dave you get what i'm saying <laughs> like th there were clear times where it's like uh oh, look, uh, uh i knew i knew who who was due respect and who wasn't and then they didn't get that far far where i would uh i would be out wide, outright rude to people like if they disrespected me, I I I put them in their place, but not not in a rude way. Okay, mail slot this dude. Can't mail slot him. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, no, that tis my grandpa. I've come across a few struggles lately just regarding that. Uh, I've had to a I've, I've had to ask for like a like a, a pass I used to taking coffee and plain donuts. Thank yep. It's always with the donuts, isn't it? That's how they get you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. It's always with the donuts. That's how they snag you. But yeah. I will say, um, I'm gonna say thank you to you, Mama. Uh. Um, my grandpa, because like I said, I've already expressed it to you how hard of a topic it is for me to talk about him. Um, people are very aware how hard it is for me to talk about him. The, the people, especially, especially when I did that um, that Zoom call, I actually actually was getting choked up. I used to have tradition where every Christmas, she would get them and we would have, she would get them Christmas morning while we opened Fred. Yep special moments but it's hard it it's hard for me to talk about my, about my grandpa and I want to thank you for this time to actually talk about him because for the I'm gonna just be honest this is the first time I've ever talked about him and like I didn't get choked up um so uh you know like I said I never really know how my streams go but the fact that I can say that you know I actually got into this one and just spontaneously started talking about my grandpa and nothing really held me back um it's a special moment for me and this is why i can say like you know i think i've actually gotten to a point where i can stream i don't think i'd be able to stream if i was still in that kind of unhealthy mindset this takes me back last time i was here i had tiny tina riding piggyback right Throwing you're okay here while I, I know how it is i know how it is on their faces. <laughs> 
It took a while. Um, I I really had to learn that um hey, do me a favor. that bottling the stuff up, it, it, bottling it up is good to an extent. I think the reason why people have a ho habit of bottling up their emotions is because when stuff like this happens, you're in a severe vulnerable state, and it's really hard to open up. Because it's such a, uh, it's such I'm gonna just call it a rainbow of emotions that you don't even you don't even firmly grasp it yourself. And so, um, but if you keep them bottled up, and I've been on that end where I kept them bottled up, it starts to deteriorate you. There has to be a moment where you learn to open up, even if it's to yourself. It has to be a release. It has to be a let go. There has to be some kind of healing from that because it, it does affect your health. It affects everything, and it's I, I I'm going to be the first one to say it. No sense of the word is it easy. In no sense of the word is it easy. But you have to eventually like live and let live. I think my biggest saving grace was my sister. Just cause um she kinda snagged me she she kinda snagged me from the turmoil. Um uh when I finally left that job at the golf course, I think I already told you there was a lot of things at once that were going bad. And um Yeah. Okay, and others it hits like a freight train. I know that. Like, so just just a quick comment to the freight train thing. Like, literally, there's times at work where I would just break down, just spontaneously. That's how hard it used to hit me. But um, no, my sister saved, kind of like snagged me from all that turmoil. Um, when I left that golf course job, and I told, I already told you, a lot of bad things went down. That was kind of cool. A lot of bad things went down all at once, and uh, it was a great confusion. It was a great just like, what the hell just happened, and what do I do next? And the only thing my sister did was say, hey, just come stay with me at the apartment for a bit. So I stayed at her apartment for a bit. I stayed there for about two months, um, and a lot of that was just talking to her. I, I mean, I, there was straight up days where I would wake up and just uh, just talk to her and tell her, like, man, like, why do I feel this way? Why do I would sleep. I told her, I said, look, look. She would like say, how would you sleep? And I'd just be like, yo, I didn't sleep at all. Like I said, I can't even call it sleep. <laughs> and she started to get me to realize that I, like, sure, there was now issues I was dealing with. Like, the it's easy to, to address that, you know, I, like, I had broken up with an ex-girlfriend. I had left my job. Everything, like, shit had hit the fan. And those were the issues that I was dealing with, with at that time. But in reality, it was like I said this is why you have to learn how to let go of all the stuff you bottled up in reality it was all the crap that I had like stored up what's up daredevil always nice to have you we're having deep conversations again here <laughs> in reality it was all the stuff I I hope you're doing well daredevil it's always nice to have you here in reality it was all the stuff I had stored up that was eating away at me it was the stuff I had stored up that had led me down the path that I'd taken you know, not really dealing with. Yeah, go ahead. My boys are gonna come in and steal the explosives, but the sky's gotta be clear first. Take out those buzzers. Like that? Set it there. I don't know if you heard me, but yeah, I'm ready for your question. It'll probably pop up the instant I say that. <laughs> uh, why don't 
these guys just give up. You already killed their boss. Idiots. That used to happen. This is why I say, um, I'm glad I'm able to talk about it now. That's why it was so hard. So, my grandpa used to live on, in an apartment complex, and I have a vivid memory of his door being the last door at the hallway. So, example, if you look down the hallway, the way that his hallway was, there were, as you'd go down the hallway, there'd be doors on the left and the right, but his door was literally at the end of the hallway. He lived on the edge of the apartment complex. So what I used to do every day I would go visit him is I'd get off the elevator and even though I was a kid I felt as fast as can be and stuff like that and I would sprint to his um his uh his house. After having him pass, I used to wake up with dreams of running through that hallway and um either never making it to his to his room or when I do it would open to nothing. So there was a time where it, 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 I used to have dreams and I would wake up in like, not just crying, but like hot and cold sweats. It was a really big, hard thing for me to deal with. I can officially say I know what loss is like because it, it's, it's not a battle that you just get over with. <laughs> it, 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 and, and, and I'll be honest, even though people say time is like, can heal all wounds, uh, he died when I was six and I'm 27 and uh, the only real time I can say I officially was starting to deal with it I admitted his I had I admitted his death when I was eight but the trauma still hit me until I was 26 25 26 that's a long time to be dealing with something like that and I'm not saying and, and I, <laughs> In some cases, I might be compared. I might be a speed runner. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Like it's different for everybody. So, no, I I, I have, and it, it's not something easy to deal with. I don't I don't expect people to um to be okay with their own losses and their own situations. I'm trying to call her, and realize she's gone. Wrecked and crying. Yep. One hundred percent understand that. And I, the unfortunate thing with loss is that there's no real remedy from her passing. Yeah. And I can look back and say that you know I I think I had that too. Uh, unmedicated patient just dealing with severe trauma. But, um, uh, no, the, the thing is, is like, the, unfortunately, it just seems like there's no real rem remedy. Like, I don't even, people, people can advocate for, you know, actually, like, taking, like, well, drugs uh, and stuff like that, but that's not a, um, it's totally okay. This, this is what my stream's supposed to be. These are the people I want to attract. Like we can like, but like we can joke, we can have fun. Like you know, our streams get wild and stuff like that. But on the off chance it gets to these situations, this is what I want for people. This is what I want. I want I want the the place where they can vent, where they can learn that it's not just them. Because one of the biggest things that I've had to deal with this whole time is I felt alone. I felt like I was the only one going through all this on my own, and that no matter like I, it really got to a point where I felt like my problems had no solution and I just had to deal with it and in reality in some sense I had to deal with it but in a constructive manner I, I didn't have to let it eat at me it might get easier but it's still there it's not a battle that ends overnight it's not it it, it just comes with the territory I, I honestly, like I said, I'm I'm here able to stream all this and grow from it and say these things because I ha I've learned to, I've gotten to the point where I can accept it for what it was. I'm not ashamed of what I went through. I'm not, I I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody else. But at the same time, I have to accept what happened, and you know, either let it eat away at me, or grow from it and just become stronger because of it.
because the reality is is that my grandpa was such a great man he was such an influential person in my life he really wouldn't have wanted me to go through all that pain he honestly probably would not have wanted that he he would not have wanted that life that I went through because of his loss to have been that way but what am I gonna do about it it hurts it hurts every second but he he would not want me to live like that I can honestly say that he would want he would want all do you feel like there's there's a hole in your spirit or heart I felt that way when I was going through it I feel it getting more restored every day that I live uh, honestly like I said doing doing talking to you about this is is healing me as well I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to you right now keep going I'm, I'm I'm here because yeah I know I'm right in saying that they would want us to be happy at all times I mean, it's just a weird scenario of accepting it in a, in a, in a weird way if, it, if that makes any sense it's just not a fast process so many other times, I couldn't do it. That beacon fell. It's my ticket out. Bring it back. Bring it back. Okay, ladder boy. Ooh, my phone's not plugged in. But no, I don't. I used to feel. Need a moment? Take it. Don't worry. I'm here, I ain't going anywhere. I love Nick Knack from Finding Nemo. It's probably like my favorite Disney uh, short. And that'll happen. Like I said, this is this is what I want for my stream. It's okay. Like, like honestly, this is why I said if people come and we have these moments, you know, you can lurk. You're not alone in this world, because I remember that's how I felt. <laughs> Wait, have you um, you know the short I'm talking about, Nick Knack? That's like my favorite short. It's with the snowman stuck in the snow globe. But no, you're okay, Mama. It's all right. Put the beacon down, right there, right there, right now. All right, there you go, buddy. Have fun. You like Ford and Honey Dory too? I only saw it once. I'd have to rewatch it to get really into it. I think I saw it like on an off chance with like my family. You don't remember Nick Knack? Oh! I love that short, man. It's about a snowman 
So some like it takes place in some dude's um like housing complex, and he has all these um collectible uh, figures, and it's and it's called like the Sunny Collection. So like when he goes to Miami, he gets a, a Sunny uh, palm tree. Like the, the the company is called Sunny. That that's how you know it's like a collection. And like he, apparently he went to Alaska one time and he got a Sunny Alaska thing. And the whole point is the um the collections that he got are sentient. So the snow globe that he got uh, uh, has a snowman in it who's basically trapped in the snow globe and hates it because it's like a prison. But he looks over to his right and he sees uh, this mermaid. I, th- I can't remember the exact place, but it's I think it was like sunny Miami or something like that. And she's like, is this this hot girl? And he's trying to escape from the snow globe to, you know, to go get to the girl. But it's a funny, humorous little short. I, I would really advise like searching up on YouTube. It's called Nick Knack, but with a K. So K-N-I-C-K and then K-N-A-C-K, Nick Knack. And, um... It's funny, uh, but my favorite part, because like I, I'm, I love music and stuff like that, is that the music isn't, um, the music isn't uh, with instruments. It's all, um, is it what is that called? Acapella. So it's actual people singing in the music. But yeah, it's a little, it's a fun little short. It might cheer you up, honestly. If you're feeling a little low, I, I, it's, 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 it's a wholesome sh- uh, short, in my opinion. Nothing that takes it too serious. Just a little fun little story about a guy trying to escape a snow globe to see a hot chick. And he just fails in, he, in a humorous way. Check it out. Even if you want to just step away from the stream right now and just watch something, just kind of reset the mind a bit. Am I winning, son? I don't know how you really win at Borderlands, but I ain't dying. So yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Farewell. How you doing, Nergi? Always a pleasure. So, Mama, Nergi was actually my first foreign streamer, or for, for, uh, first former uh, 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 follower. Like, so, um, that stream, the first stream I did, which was a Need for Speed Heat, uh, that I told you got deleted, uh, he was the first one to appear. So, he has a special place in my heart, and he always, he always appears at random, just pops in, says, what's up, and then goes. <laughs> He cracks jokes every now and then, makes fun of my gaming too. It's always a pleasure, Nergi. But yeah, before. <laughs> okay, so context, Mama. Um, so N- Nergi hopped on my stream with Need for Speed Heat because he plays it himself. But the cool thing about this guy is he actually uses a racing wheel, and I'm not gonna lie, he's actually a very good racer. But um, there's a car um that I absolutely hate <laughs> just because I can't drive it, and it's also the worst car in the game. And uh, he he showed me. <laughs> now it's just every time I get a shot. You serious? Wow, okay. <laughs> but um uh he basically showed me that it is drivable. It's still a piece of shit. You can't deny that, but it is maintainable in some sense of the word. But he I uh, hopped into the stream and I started making fun of him a bit and he's like, yeah, "No, no, no." Like it was just a little bit back and forth banter, but uh he ended up crashing the car. Why he was talking trash to me. 
<laughs> so I clipped it <laughs> and posted it to his channel. But no, I got mad respect for you, Nergi. Not only do you use a racing wheel, you're actually really damn Keep good at the game. Down, My boys are starting <laughs> <laughs> the wow, that was a nice end up. Yeah. I like him. I got mad respect for his racing skills. Ah, okay. What's next on the agenda? Click. You see that building with the light shooting out of it? That's the info stockade. <laughs> That's the other thing. He uh he has frequent um technological problems. <laughs> We're trying to make sure he stays, you know, mentally sane with all the ones he comes across. What was it one time? It was like Microsoft Edge was just really screwing with your your um your stream, like Microsoft Edge of all things. <laughs> Where's the? Wasn't there like a menu or something like that? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right. Okay, here, here, here to ramp. But everything good in the neighborhood, Nerky? I saw that a bit. Uh, every time you're on it, I'm either um at home <laughs> asleep or at work. What's it about? Can you got you got like a brief summary of what kind of game that's it that is? It needs work. That won't necessarily deter me. Been rebooted seven times. Man. What? Okay. Man, those skags have no idea what I got playing for them. It's pretty much gonna be off the chain. Seven times with different people in charge. Of okay. Well, I mean, if you do different people every time instead of you know that that throws a wrench in it even more. But okay. Because they gotta figure out what the hell is going on with the last person. Oh. What's it about? Like, is it a shooter? Is it an adventure game? Are you enjoying it or open world PvP MMO? Okay. Is it is it like enjoyable or is it or Oh knickknack? <laughs> it's one of my it's one of my more favorite shorts. 
if not my favorite one. brain for it to not be enjoyable. <laughs> Stop selling yourself short, man. Come on. So it, um, 1999? Oh no, good game. 1989, alright. Cause that's not when uh, Finding Nemo came out. Alright. Was I supposed to go here? You're not that old. Don't, don't start that. Do not start that. Do not start that. Okay. can't say you're old until at, at least I'd say late 50s and you're not in late 50s okay <laughs> you get way too much <laughs> supposed to go and where's dude where's my car they blew up my car <laughs> there we go deploy teleport zoom zoom time <laughs> So, you need people to play with. Okay. Um, do you have a way to find a community that you could join? Are there other, is there. For me, I'm not in the mode right now to like be purchasing games. I need to get more of an income before I really do that. That's why I'm streaming games that I have and choosing like the cream of the crop to like really make the streams enjoyable. <laughs> But, um, you saying it needs work, um, what do you think it needs work on? It's free? Okay. Is it, well, the only thing I got is a PlayStation 4, so, like, um, oh, that's what makes it worse. Is it a PC-only game? It just came to PC, okay. Hey buddy, it's me, Ronin. Let's kill Handsome Jack and then we'll all go out for milkshakes. No, I'm just it just came to PC again. and this is post it being bad. transferred from person to person. To tell you that is doing a bang and so and it, you're saying it still needs work? <laughs> But you're having like this weird love hate relationship with it now? <laughs> Who am I being honest with? It's a console game? Okay.
What's the forget me not, mama? The PC version different. Okay. I'm assuming there's no crossplay. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were pointing something out in the game. Nah. Cause I was I was thinking about maybe hitting you up, but uh, I, then now there's nothing I can really do. I hate these dudes. There, there, there's no way to get past them. Just gotta wait. So then, in your in your opinion, Nergi, is PC or better than the console version? <laughs> or is this the time where PC has failed? A limp noodle? <laughs> no for body strength. Hey. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Mama Toast. No! <laughs> Though my sister did say bring a bathing suit. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, were you here for that, Nergi? I don't think you were. Yesterday's stream, um, what was the title of this stream? My stream wants me to do a hot tub, um, stream. When I get a camera. And they want me to wear a Speedo. And there's no way I'm wearing a mankini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speedo. <laughs> I call that a mankini. <laughs> no. <laughs> They do not. Do not support these people with these horrible stream suggestions. Oh, I shot my own turret. Nobody, nobody mentioned that, okay? Did the grenade hop out of the shield? <laughs> that, that reminded me of that, um, I don't know if you guys have seen that clip, the guy who, um, He's playing COD and shoots his own shadow. Oh, I just shot my own shadow. Nobody clipped that. It says, the title of the clip is, Dumb Egg Shoots His Own Shadow. <laughs> Sounds like the pipes are nearly bursting. <laughs> Hit the last pumping station. I mean, you can clip it if you want. It's just going to add more humor to my channel. <laughs> I, 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 I'm at this, I've reached a stage where I know I can laugh at myself. Boop. Oh yeah, and then th then there's the whole kilt thing, which is actually more scary. So like, it was one thing when we were joking about wearing like a mankini or not, but then my brother actually came in and uh, said that he would buy me a kilt. He said, "Check your mailbox." So um, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, Nergi. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good habit to have. Just to laugh at yourself. But yeah, my brother said um, uh, to check my mailbox. Um, when they mentioned getting a kill, so uh, I don't know if that's actually gonna happen or not. But uh, knowing my brother, he would do something like buy me a kill. <laughs> Pressure the pipeline so high, a little force will pop it like a blister. Get back to the pipeline and bring your vehicle. <laughs> Oh, I know, but it, it it would be a new experience because wearing a kilt comes with you know the bracing feeling of a breeze. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so it would be an interesting experience. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and, and let's just say the AC in this place it ain't it ain't it ain't weak. <laughs> so I might. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm, I'm a little hesitant about what that experience will, might become. <laughs> okay. I could have sworn there's another mission here. <laughs> it okay. First off, I know it's gonna be life changing. It, there is no it could be. <laughs> nope, there's no more. But let me sell this. Almost dead. Ah, Hop back in. Yeah. Keep it going. Hey oh everybody. Just fooling around in Borderlands. Thank you for stopping by. It's always appreciated. If you want to lurk, you can lurk. If you want to chill and talk, we can. We're talking about what my next streams are going to look like. And apparently it's going to involve a kilt. If the title confused you, that's because of the topic that happened in the prior stream. Future streams are uh, titles are influenced by the prior streams. If you end up like those, oh my god, the ones with the girls over the shipping grates holding down the, their skirts. <laughs> are you talking about those pictures, Nergi? Oh god. <laughs> if a, if a picture of me in a kilt holding down the kilt as wind blows up up it gets out on the internet. Yes, it's chatting. <laughs> Do the face, okay. But I don't know if people want to chat with me, Mama. I don't know. I know you do. Obviously, we get we get uh, get good chemistry and can start up a conversation. Ah, damn you! You would be putting up a shield. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, dude. What am I supposed to do with that? Or he's like, do the face. I do this. Okay. No one wants to chat with me on mine. So let's talk to myself. But that's how you have to start. So that's how I started my early streams as well. And I literally, I think... Uh, it, it, it got pretty lonely, honestly. <laughs> Just playing a game and like you're talking to the the voice inside your own head. You can lose your sanity a little bit after a couple hours. But it, I I just try to make my um streams humorous as much as possible to kind of like strike a chord with people, and see if they want to hop in and crack jokes as well. Cause that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> But see, I think that's what brought people to me. I, I was answering myself. <laughs> you should check them out, man. I, I literally had, I literally started up, ended up talking to myself a bit. <laughs> Where is the other entrance? There's always a second one. I'll leave it be. Whatever. Smooth brain Titus. Come on, man. <laughs> See, Nergi, you have a habit of demeaning yourself. But here you are with all these highbrow humorous jokes. Like, that's not a smooth brain Titus type of thing. <laughs> Use some of these skill points. Boop, 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 boop. Ooh, about to get a second saber in a second. <laughs> That's not smooth brain Titus. I have a little bit of those habit tendencies as well. Mining information, security footage. 
<laughs> yeah, it's just it's just zoning out. I I'm what you would call a very high critical thinker. I don't know if people really catch on to it, but I notice it because I, I guess we all notice our own problems very easily. I stutter a lot, and I also say um a lot, uh, to the point where it's just habit. But it's because what I've noticed is that I, is that I uh, I think a lot faster than I can actually say the words. So my body, my mind actually goes through like a, a physical pause a lot. Doesn't mean I'm stupid. Doesn't mean I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, I, my, my body will literally do a pause automatically. And it's like, uh, there are classes you can take, speech classes and stuff like that you can do to get over it. But I've never been a part of them. So I just got to live with the fact that people might think outwardly I am stupid. Because I say um a lot and I pause a lot. To the point where sometimes if I'm really thinking hard about something, I'll actually get straight up quiet mid-conversation. And, uh... If you've ever been around where um, stir fry, my brother comes in and says something that really confuses me, it'll he it'll shut me down for like a solid like two minutes before I can actually get like gra grasp the words and use them. But it's not smooth brain Titus. <laughs> We're all good. Just have a tendency to zone out a bit. Once again, Mama, I, I said I saw what you did there. I saw the sarcasm. I know you're not being mean. Listen, listen, listen to me. Just you and me, Mama. Just you and me. We're good. I've gone in this world long enough. I, 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 I've gone long in this world long enough where um, I really try my best not to get offended by what people say. And really, it's okay. You really can't offend me. Um, if you do, I go out of my way. So, all right, more revealing stuff, okay? Just so people can understand what's going on. Um, if you've been in my streams, you'll know that um, I have issues with my mom right now. Um, I've come to accept a lot of things, and I understand that she loved me the best way that she could. But in reality, what ended up happening was is that she lied to me for the first 24 years of my life. So it's been real, and I'm 27. So it's been a three-year kind of like healing process to kind of come to terms with that come to terms with that and start to really love my mother for who she is um but in that time i cut my mother off i have not said a single word to her and it's only just been recently that i've actually started talking to her again so when it comes to just random people on the internet they have to understand that i cut off my own mother for three years and I'm talking nothing no response to emails no response to phone calls one time she actually came to where I had moved to to my actual front door and I slammed the door in her face like that's the kind of thing that I went through so for me if I could shut down my own mother just know if you ever cross me to a point where I don't want to deal with you you're nothing I, I, I can just shut you down and just remove you I had to cancel my own family at one point and to me that was harder so people will know people will know when they cross me because I'll make it known I'll let you know like yo you 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 did something that I do not agree with and you need to get the fuck out right now so there's no need for the apologies if you feel like you've been you've been mean or if you cross the line or something like that, I will be 100% up and real with you about it if you cross the line. And I feel like I have a, I have a, a point. No, I know. But I'm saying, like, here I am revealing to you that I will let you know, mama, if you cross the line. <laughs> like I said, I've let my own mother know what that line is. And that was a hard scenario. You will, you will know. People, for the most part, will know when they cross a line with me. People will know. I mean, hell, there's times where I stuck up with co stuck up for coworkers because they were being sexually harassed, and so that person that was sexually harassing them crossed the line, and I let them know. Got that fool fired too. Okay, I will. Um, got that fool fired too. So, like, you know, uh, people will know the line the, the they'll know my moral standpoint and I'll make it known 
But for the most part, I'm a chill guy. I don't like to react first. And we live in a world where a lot of people react first. And that's what causes more problems. I'll simply just let you know what's going on. What's up? <laughs> Nergy, you are something else, man. <laughs> So no, we're good people. You really can't offend me. I mean, to be honest, I'm I'm black and I've been called the N-word before. And I've paid those people no mind. Like the only thing that like literally the only thing that like like just just example of what happened. They called me the N-word, they were trying to be offensive of me, and I literally just said, Okay. And I said, You have a nice day. And I went about my business. I give no energy to people I don't want to want them to be around me. I don't have that luxury. I've gone through too much crap but with the ones again, my own family that um that I don't pay I don't let that stuff ha eat away at me. I can't afford to let it eat away at me. I, I or else it'll halt where I'm at. It'll halt my growth. So uh, uh, people will be offensive, people will do things that'll hurt you and stuff like that. For me personally, you can't really offend me outright. It, take, it takes a lot. I think I stand up more for other people before I actually uh, stand up for myself because I, c I control that aspect of my life pretty hardcore. But no, Nergi, you're something else, man. <laughs> Insult me all you wish. My brain is too smooth. <laughs> it's as smooth as it is. <laughs> At least your brain's aerodynamic, right? Has some positive parts to it. <laughs> Jesus, hold on one second. Uh, and we're Gucci. Okay. Uh, we'll do that after we do this. But no. We're all good people. You really can't outright offend, offend me. I really try not to let negative energy pull me down. So those who stay, I mean, but I can mean I can take edgy jokes, but I, like I said, I stand up for other people um, more so for them than I do my own self. So like if something goes on where you like say something and it offends somebody else, I, I'm more quick to react to that than to my own self. If it offends me and I don't want to be around that, I just won't be around that. Where's Saturn? Hey, buddy. <laughs> ah, no. How about you come down, buddy? Come down. Hop down. I'm trying to like harvest his loot, but unfortunately he stays up there. Like the racing games a lot. Because the cars go. St 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 <laughs> what? At what time do they do that? Are you talking about the backfire? Are you talking about when the gears are grinding? <laughs> I need clarification, Nergi. Lord. Good job, Saturn. Ah. Alright, I got you. The Nerto. No, it's the, you had it right with the Nerto. It's okay. <laughs> We're all good here. <laughs> Okay. Sure, why not? You like he really did not drop a lot of loot. That's a dick move, Saturn. Spray can There you go, alright. That 
actually that actually scared me a bit. There's no, I need I actually need better guns all of a sudden, and like I'm getting nothing. Like I don't even care if it's a green. Grenades. Four Tresmenters <sighs> who arrived on a shuttle several hours ago. They are currently on a bus to Firestone. Great. Say this to them. Don't Unicorn be alarmed. <laughs> I need you to stay calm and don't let on that anyone is talking to you. Start making your way up the bus. The bus is still they make moving, the, sir. The Shut hero up. car from current you. games, boop. Yeah. John, why have you dispatched one of our satellites to Pandora? What are you doing? I, I guess it's just, to, what we need is more, because well, I feel like racing games are kind of like in this weird phase, where they're somewhat dying, but not. Like, the people that keep it going have somewhat of a passion for it, we just need people who have a deep passion for it. But as with the unicorn poop, we're talking about, um, Butt Stallion, right? And feeding her iridium and her pooping out guns. I just wish that process was faster. And for me, I actually also have had bad luck with it. She she doesn't poop enough for me with good stuff. I usually get the whites, which is kind of annoying. But Stalin, you get that? I had to. come here, girl. <laughs> but Stalin says hello. <laughs> he killed Angel long before you pulled the plug. I know. I I don't know what's going on with the gaming industry nowadays. I am a little worried, just because I'm tired of them pushing uh named what weapon. You named a weapon Butt Stallion. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> it, I, I just I'm I'm a little, I'm a little frustrated. Car games have a special place in my own heart just because I grew like I grew up with them. They're really like but like I feel like they're just not the same anymore, and I'm tired of feeling that way. I, I don't know what's going on, but people really just don't push out decent games anymore, unless it's the newest shooter. Which I don't have a problem with shooters, but like, can we go back to where games used to have like every freaking genre? Everybody, I know you're talking about your game, so you like mentioning which one's your favorite. I'm just waiting for the thoughts to complete. Out of all the ones you played, it just hit different. Okay, um, like, but that's but that, but here's what I'm saying. So like, when the Undergrounds came out, like what what I what I had just said. Oh, okay, pet peeves out of the recent games. Aren't they yet? less quality and now and they're just about money? That's my point. But like, we're talking about racing games right now because that's where it hits home. But like for me, my library expands a great range. And it's not just racing games. For me, I noticed it was losing touch with racing games because I felt like that was like the first genre to actually start to go out the window. And it only came back with games like, you know, um, Burnout Paradise. But that's not, that's more of an arcade racer. It, the Gran Turismo's were basically all the same, which I love a racing simulator. Simulator, I have, um, I have Gran Turismo, but it's mostly always the same. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm, I'm really, I'm really worried about it because, like, it, it it's getting to a point where it doesn't matter the genre. It's really starting to bleed into a money grab, no, no matter what the game is. And like it, the only games that are seeming to like do well are like indie games. Um, but at the same time, those are so poorly funded 
they never get to the point where they're just groundbreaking unless it's a miracle game and it, it, it sucks that it has to be that way I'm I'm tired of like these corporations like, and the thing is like I don't mind you making a profit but how about you make a profit by pushing the actual good game that's true but it also depends on the game because some people are redoing games because it's just cheaper just to like send out a remaster or something like that So like it, it, it depends. Jeez. I don't know. I'm just that sometimes I at times like this, especially conversations like this, I feel like I'm a, such a small fry. Like I know what I would do in these situations. I personally know, like, I think, like, if I had the funds, I'd probably, like, create my own, you know, game developing company and really just pay people to push good games. Great job, amigo. Now that you're in, there ought to be an info terminal nearby. Find it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, just actually put the actual love in it. And then also, because now times have changed, you know, do that, um, that, uh, after launch, um, uh, live service in case it needs updates and stuff like that but like just throwing it out there and I know we probably talked about it, Cyberpunk 2077 like that game is in maintenance mode and it's about to go in a year since it's launch like that's just freaking sad <laughs> the next Amazon game I don't even know I honestly, I probably never. Was it New World? I don't even know, dudes. <laughs> just a small fry dude like I, I don't have any oh my god now I'm curious about what this is what was Amazon I, I don't know for sure <laughs> big hangy <laughs> It sounds like something I probably would have been glad to have never dealt in. right <laughs> I just I don't know what to say man hey it, it, all the sound but like the fact that it, it's so prevalent prevalent in today's gaming community it just sucks
Veruca salt mentality is all over the place. It's sickening. You want Okay, but that yeah, I feel like that's also like a blurred, um, Angel, get this uh, line as well. Just because it's like no what happens, we are in a phase where games out. could be pushed out a lot sooner, in some cases. But at the same time, so like I understand why people would want new games pushed out. I think one of the things I hate is when a new console comes out and then there's that weird awkward phase where there's no games for it. Because then it's like, what the hell did I buy, buy this console for? Yeah. I swear, let's move brain. <laughs> Another shit broken game. I'm gonna break the keyboard. <laughs> So like I'm just saying like I, I it makes sense to me that people would want a game but at the same time it it's also the companies making these false as hell promises saying that they can meet those requirements. I think people would more have more respect by saying like no. So like example what what was it um is it Halo I can't remember I think it's Halo Infinite that was supposed to come out but they delayed it to make to push a good product and now everybody's really hyped for it because they actually showed some actual gameplay and it well, looks good you get what I'm saying <laughs> instead of it being like a cyberpunk display where they showed some game footage but it didn't mean shit but not the, but the newest one not not um Halo Infinite I mean not Halo um the Master Chief Collection like I think it's Halo Infinite that's coming out right now I'm a PlayStation baby, so like, excuse me for not knowing a lot about Xbox history. I just know that Halo is a popular game, and they're working on it now. But like, they actually took the right route, and are just like, you know, holding off and doing what they need to do to um to push a good game. Because I, honestly, it's probably because they saw the whole Cyberpunk fiasco and were like, oh hell no, <laughs> we ain't going through that ourselves. But no, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm just tired of these freaking agendas. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I think people would respect people saying, hey, you know, like if a developer came out and said, hey, we have to delay the game. I, I think setting reasonable goals too. Like don't delay the game so much where it's getting delayed for like five years. And or, or when when you said you could push it out in two. You get what I'm saying? But I think people will respect the the, del the, the delay if it's if you come out with a, a good game. Also know it's the main legacy for Xbox and Bethesda can't afford another fuck up, especially after with Yes. Hello, mercenary. Should you return those sensitive documents to the See, and that's where the, the whole um we can offer uh, than what Mr. the um depending on the game comes into play. Armament, for example. Because uh there's been people who delay games and then it, they push a good product and it makes sense. There's people who delay games and then it doesn't make sense. And it's just like that weird, I hate those weird type ropes that have to be walked. Like, I know no two de developers are the same, but it's like, it, sh should there be like some like medium for like what a game developer should be doing? Like, so they don't lie to the customers, but they also push a good product. But it seems like they've been lying to the customers and then they also push a piece of shit. Like, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Four times. Jesus. Brother. Do I just have to kill a skag until he drops the gun piece? Some guy from, uh, I had the beta and then played it in at least 
to and it was complete shit. I was so mad. Anyway, he offered me a pretty penny from a place here in Firestone. So it's been changed to be different, yeah. Fallout 4 was my first Fallout, and I absolutely loved it. And I, I have been considering trying to figure out if I have a way to play uh, New Vegas because apparently, apparently people really love that one as well. And I'm all for fan bases telling, like, promoting uh, uh, games that I might consider. But uh, I didn't delve into 76. I'm, uh, I'm kind of glad that that was in a phase where I wasn't really gaming. But I heard so much shit about it. To each their own. I heard people like New Vegas, but I did love 4. I th if we're going to talk about 4, I think the only thing that frustrated me was Sean. I hate Sean's guts. Like, with passion. Um, I hate the fact that uh, you go out of your whole, you cross the whole wasteland to save your son. And if you go like the Paragon route, like you, you earnestly are looking for your son just for him to be on the side of the people that are assholes. Like, I don't disrespect what the institution is trying to do, but like at the same time, like, <laughs> they, they, they're not, the way that the game made them, they're not necessarily the bad guy they're not necessarily the good guys in any real sense of the word <laughs> like I think it you don't like I think I sided with the Institute one time just to see what that story playthrough went was like but like if if you have any kind of like a basic moral standpoint they're, they're gonna grind your gears in one way shape or form Conan ish Where the hell is the gun weapon? They came to draw in another crowd. How so? Oh, well, there it is. After I just killed every single skag. What a nice day. Just walking out in the sun, talking into my echo recorder, hoping skags don't ambush me and break my gun into four separate parts before eating them. Okay. How come? That is exactly what is happening to me! We're still talking about four, right? Oof. Skags ain't a gun? No way to tell which one of the ugly dicks has it. Just start hunting Skags and trade. hope for the best. Because I, I don't know if we're talking about uh, Fallout 4 or 76. Just want to make sure we're on the same page. All I know is I just, I hated um Sean. And I've done all the different storylines. Um. Uh. What you call it? They made more PP. I wish to have up to five friends to play alongside you. It's PvP games. So Borderland, Borderlands esque type games. But with five instead of three. Like it doesn't, but it would like not even have to be shooters. It could be like, what would you like a um, multiplayer Skyrim or something? So essentially, a multiplayer Skyrim is like what, what a Monster Hunter just without the hour-long hunt. <laughs> I did enough playthroughs of Fallout 4 where um I I think my preferred uh faction the way they're pulling new world the cool and the possibilities and outcomes could be really interesting okay we'll see where it goes yeah, for the most part I hope that developers stick if they're gonna push a good game, I hope they stick to what they're trying to imagine and go with that. Because once you get to the point where you start pushing for uh, people's agendas and their preferences, that's when you start screwing over your own game. 
there's nothing wrong with doing post-launch um, live service to really um, fix the game in a certain way. But once you start listening to the, um, uh, once you start listening to all the pandering and the, no, I want this, no, I want that, that's when you start screwing over your own game. Exactly. See, we're all on the same page. I mean, it's crazy, but all it does, all it comes down to, is uh, can we just have a good, a good game? <laughs> it's weird. It's weird that we have that we have these in-depth conversations, and then it's like, if you really just narrow it down, yo, can you just make a good game? <laughs> weird position it's a weird position as a as a consumer <laughs> hey i will give you my money if you make a good game not nah, ask too much to ask <laughs> I just bring up those conversations in my stream sometimes just because the reason they rush games is because of greed and deadlines. Yeah, I know. It, it It's just this endless loop. And it's like, it seems like, though, that's like the, like, I feel like that, that like the mentality that we're talking about right now is the majority of gamers. Like, I don't think I'm wrong in saying that either. I think a majority of gamers all have that same mentality. I just want a good game pushed. And please stop being a money grabbing piece of shit and just push out a good game. Like you can have my money, but I want my money to be worth the game that you want to put out. I think that's a very common mentality, but here we are in this weird situation where that's the that's actually the loudest voice being spoke and they're still not doing it. And then nothing ever gets done about it just a weird as fuck loop that just keeps on going on and I'm getting older and older I'm tired of this I'm, I'm, I'm still in my youth I want to play some good games <laughs> would be, I would pay more to have an amazing game fuck this I'd pay up to 100 that's what I'm saying I actually do pay for DLCs and stuff like that too you push a good game, I'm right there supporting it. You'll get your money's worth. Why not go for that instead of, you know, uh, giving me a piece of shit? <laughs> no. Okay. It's actually storming right now outside. But yeah, I think they're just trying to cater to live service and stuff like that. What well, live service in their favor? An example. So like, I had to have this conversation with my nephews because um, they're 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 Fortnite maniacs. They really love Fortnite, and this isn't a knock on Fortnite. Uh, just a little background on me. I don't really do battle royales. It's not something that I really gel with. But this isn't a knock on Fortnite. But Fortnite to me is going to be that shady backstab if they don't do something quick. And the reason why I say that is because um, my my nephews and I'm glad they're having fun with it now, but I remember when uh, when I played Call of Duty and stuff like that, the skin I got on my gun was mine, uh, and like I never lost that. I can like I can still I can put my plug my PlayStation 3 in, put in Modern Warfare 2. My skin is still there, and if I want to, I can put on a LAN party and use everything. All the things I unlocked and everything like that is mine. But like yeah, there's so many damn microtransactions, and uh, 
unfortunately, I had to tell my, my nephews, I said, they're showing no signs that once Fortnite dies, that you'll be able to keep all that stuff, because Fortnite is online only. Um, and I had to, I had to break that to them. I said, like, you know, I said, I'm glad you got all these skins and stuff like that. And, you know, I said, enjoy the game for what it is. But what I like about the games that I play is I still have them and I still have everything on them. I can plug in my PlayStation 2 and then there's all my data from all the games that I played. And now there's an off chance it gets corrupted. But if I, if I grind it again, I can grind for it again if I wanted to and I'll get it all back. But um, all these skins that you bought and stuff like that, and it's online only. Once Fortnite has bit the dust and they close the service, and my my nephews, because they're in their youth, they're like, no, the game will never die. And I said, are you sure? And I had to tell them. I said, who? D what does Fortnite cater to the most? Who plays it the most? And, and like, they, you know, they're kids, so they're a little stubborn. And so they they mention people, and I'm just throwing an example. They mention like Ninja, who's who's he's an adult who plays Fortnite. And I said, but I said the majority of people that it's for is for kids, right? And I said, do you honestly think you're gonna be playing Fortnite for the rest of your life? And I said, eventually you guys are gonna grow up. You're gonna get tired of Fortnite, even if they install new features and stuff like that, like new new level, new maps and stuff like that. It's gonna get boring eventually. I'm just mentioning him as a as a as a as a as a gamer, just you know, a famous name. But like, um, I told him eventually you're gonna like you like you as a group, your generation is eventually gonna get bored of the game. It happened with my generation. It, it happens all the time where people get bored of a game. But unlike me, that you're gonna have that moment where you're gonna look back and you're like, man, I remember when we used to play Fortnite and we used to do this, that, and the other. And unfortunately, in your case, you're not going to be able to go back and re-enjoy them. And I don't see that being fixed. I don't see anything that they're going to implement where it's like all the money, the thousands of dollars that people put inside this game, they will be catered to when the game ends, if they ever want to go back. And, um, I, I like, but I told him, I said, I had to break it to my, like, it's like a hard line to work with my nephews because I didn't want to spirit crush them. I told him, I said, that's why I kind of, I kind of have a disgust for Fortnite because it feels like it's going to be like that, that slow sleep in the night backstab. And like, I don't want my, I don't want my nephews going through that. But unfortunately, I, that's the only thing I'm seeing that's going to happen right now. And I'm like, like that's like, that's going to suck. It's going to hurt me to see that my nephews have to go through that. I really want them to be able to go back and do things that I do. Like, ex example, they're, they they like Borderlands. They don't really play it so much because Fortnite is a thing right now, but they saw me playing Borderlands 2 before Borderlands 3 came out. And they're like, oh, what is that game? They actually really loved Borderlands 2. But the thing is, Borderlands 3 was coming out. How old is Borderlands 2? And my point is, is that he, like they they were able to buy this game and they got it in hard copy and they have it. it it's theirs DLC is and everything and like I'm like they're gonna have more fun with that game in the long run than Fortnite because they can come back to this they're too young to really understand this game right now so they're not really too far in it like they're still in the beginning stages they haven't gotten to true volt under mode or anything like that but the fun that they had with this game they can always go back to and start all over again <laughs> but um no it, it, it's just I, I don't have a disdain for fortnite i think it's cool in the way it is i like the mechanic that it implements it's unique in its own way i can respect it for the game it is i just don't like the direction it's gonna go and i feel like that's gonna play a big role in spirit crushing my nephews <laughs> <laughs> there are no training wheels <laughs> but yeah you know I, I I really hope that why am I getting a phone call from Texas uh give me a second people I, I do know people in Texas so give me a second
Yo, I got people in Texas asking for my car's extended warranty. <laughs> Not trying to say, yeah, it sucks, but maybe it will make them go to the older games and be more cautious when purchasing a game later on. But I want what I what I think what worries me about um them getting shysted at young, such a young age is um how that'll influence future games. We're in a really critical moment right now where um yes i'm an old gamer yes i can see the value in all these old games and stuff like that but the next generation is coming in and i don't i don't want them having a history of getting fucked over you get what i'm saying i i i want i want them to be able to have some good memories i don't want them you know being like because like this could influence the next people to make the next games they're gonna have their own ideas that's something that that's gonna um but honestly like i i don't think our, my generation is going to be the people who really get delve too much into virtual reality gaming. We started it. We, 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 you know, we set the foundation for it. But in all honesty, it's going to be my nephew's generation that are going to have like their, their hands at the wheel when that stuff actually, actually starts to take off. Do I want them to go into that with the history of being fucked over? Or knowing that if they get in this industry, they either get fucked over or fuck over the people that they're trying to sell their product to? No. I want them to go into it with a passion. I want them to go into it with, you know, inspiration and actually have a motivation to issue a, uh, like issue out a product and be amazing at it. Because then not only will they succeed, they're going to be groundbreaking people. They're going to they're gonna shatter the earth when they come up with these ideas. But that's not how it's really going to go if, that's, if we're going to start it off with them being, getting fucked over. <laughs> I'm not gonna turn it in. Oh no, they're in the other area. Dare to dream. <laughs> but no, it's gonna be a wake up call. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, I just. I draw our little idea and have for a game and want me. and want to me at some point. Yeah, like I said, I don't think I'm I'm amazing, amazing. I don't think like like I I can't I can't do this on my own. This is why I want like a place to actually talk about these things. You know, get get a community of random people from different corners of the gaming industry realizing that this is a problem that's coming up. Um, and that you know, uh, if we don't really do something about it, you know, it's really gonna fuck over how gaming really continues from here on out. Are we really gonna let companies just keep on getting away with just pushing? Um, financial agendas like is that really what we want <laughs> no problem dude I encourage it which one has damn you which one of y'all have it That one? No, that one. Come on, buddy. Is he fighting Mr. Bear? But yeah. You can show me a few things. Got no problem. I'll pause when I get a ping on my Discord. Actually, now I come to think of it. So I think what we'll do is I'll finish this Handsome Jack mission, turn in a few missions. Uh, I don't, I'm having a great time and I'm, I don't think I'm really going to go out this afternoon because like I said, I got to start packing to leave tomorrow. So I'll still be like at my house, but going to keep the streams fairly manageable. So I will like have to like cut it off, but um, we'll finish this first. Um, any last thoughts from people we can talk about, and then we'll call it. Mama, if you're still there, um, if there are people in my stream and they want to hang around, uh, do you think you can help me find somebody to raid as well, just to pass the baton? A lot of pings incoming, okay.
good lord. <laughs> Literally, I heard uh, that, that was one ping, but the notification said JPEG, 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 JPEG. <laughs> it was like I was at a slot machine. <laughs> Pause for a second. And these are drawings, right? I already told you I'm jealous of the of people who can draw, man. I'm still at stick figure level. So give me a second. Uh, let me check this out. Hells yeah, bro. That's what I like to see. I can't even do this. Okay. We'll do. Um God damn, man. Yeah, I tried to start delving into this and I couldn't. I'd never really got the time to do it, but god damn, I love it. Ounce of iridium I've got into you, but you got a talent, man. Keep at it. Working. Why? I I'm sorry, I don't know. You're a side. Someone was circling you. One of a kind. Now and now you're scared? It's okay, Nergi. They can't hurt you. You're in my stream. You're safe. <laughs> Yeah. So, oh, thank you everybody for stopping by. Um, I'm just a chill streamer. That little message at the bottom is kind of what we do. We have critical thoughts. Um, we just kind of chill, get things off our chest, and uh, you can laugh at my game, and we can hang out, have fun. For the most part, anything in my stream. Uh, so like, if the title brought you here, that's because that's kind of the stuff we talked about in our last stream. Uh, so. Um, Anything that goes on in this stream is what influences the next one. Oh, Jesus. God damn it. Alright, I think we're Gucci. Your interwebs are being unstable. <laughs> it's always the interwebs, right? Your wife suggested as much before her disappearance. Jimmy, please make a note. I'm strangling Mr. Morin. And they want me to go back to balance. Okay, I won't turn it in, but I'll save here. Um, ah, uh, I love having these conversations. I love doing these streams. Like I said, it's therapeutic for me. It helps me get to the next situation. It helps me get through the day. Um, Mama, we obviously got a lot deeper today. And I hope you're having a good afternoon. I hope, you know, this helped in some way for you. Because it definitely helped me. But, um, I gotta cut it off because it's time to start planning for the next days. Um, uh, let me get on it and click this dude. Okay. I hope I'm gonna have a safe trip. I doubt it's gonna be dangerous. Second. Yeah, I you know you know I have. I told you to keep on the lookout for certain things. Uh, and um, so far it's been going well. I'm setting up the raid right now, guys. I once again I appreciate everybody who stayed here and you know chat it up with me if you're lurking you're lurking it's all cool I appreciate all the kind of support and this is the kind of channel I have I don't mind people lurking I actually encourage it because I hope it just provides some kind of a background noise to help you get through your day but everybody's always welcome to join in and you know uh, chat it up and get stuff off their chest if they want to but we're setting it up and I'll end my stream here guys Thank you very much.